you think there's anybody in North Korea right now that listens to Barstool Podcasts? Like, are there any, like, huge pizza review Or fans? which podcast do you think, yeah, pizza review might be it. What Barstool Podcast do you think would really appeal? Out and about? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just stuff that they don't know anything about. Chicks in the office. Mean girls. Brianna Chicken Fry. There's yeah, huge I, Chicken Fry heads over there. <laughs> Chaps, I could imagine some of their military, like, intelligence operatives who wanted to get immersed with u.s military culture may have gandered zero block 30 i think zero oh block i completely 30's. doubt that no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i don't think so super moon tomorrow oh really oh yeah. blood or no it's gonna be the biggest super moon until 2037. So Damn. enjoy it tomorrow. Your calendars. Okay. Soak it up. I'm going to stare at the moon. I might howl at it. You're going to be what? On a plane? Okay. Um. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it's going to be big. They say that it's going to be like uh, the normal moon is the size of a nickel. This moon's going to be the size of a quarter. Let's go. So. Damn. Wow. That's, that's a pretty big upgrade. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a big one. You're a moon guy. You're not a moon guy. I'm not a big. Wait, we got to say this is gold. <laughs> okay, this is podcast gold. Big yeah, yeah, you got yeah. strong we're opinions. Re- we're recording, aren't we? It's on the moon. Yeah, this will be the cold open. Yeah. It is recording, right? Yeah, we're we're recording. We're waiting for Billy. Let's just well yeah. wait for Billy. Yeah. The cold open. So, Big T, I'm sorry for interrupting. Or you're not a big moon guy. Uh, not not necessarily. Well, I guess yeah. I'm not a moon guy. I'm not a big any like the the solar eclipse a few years ago. There was like you gotta watch this. I was inside. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> um, like the moon. The moon's gonna be a little bigger. That's awesome. Um, you know if you're into that sort of thing, it just it doesn't do anything for me. Interesting. Big T, how do you feel about the Webb Telescope? Uh, I do think you that's... think that they can see the Big Bang? I think it's kind of fake. Oh, I think I I think it's uh, there's a lot of AI imaging going on there. Oh, now Big T, a lot of people say Christianity sort of evolved from sun worships, sun worshippers. Wait, S O N? Is if that's the case? Yeah, yeah. 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 Who says that? Well, they say that they adopted a lot of um, things from like past pagan religions that worship the sun. And- I, I think there are like traditions like December 25th and stuff like that, that you can argue Easter had had something to do with that. But like the religion itself doesn't really, you know, there's well, no, yeah. there's no son of God. That's the son. In college, I watched a documentary called Zeitgeist mm. and that, that really broke it down, but that was a long time ago. So I yeah. can't really argue over here. Zeitgeist- John, cha- John chapter one is definitely that way. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word became God and became flesh and dwelt among us. That's definitely a pagan concept. Yeah, is is the sun God? Uh-huh. It, I would, we're, I would it, say, yeah. Insofar as we're all kind of God, because he we're created all, us in stardust. his head. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, no sun, no life on earth. So I feel like sun worshiping makes kind of sense. Yeah. You sh- if, if there's one thing that you should worship outside of religion, it's definitely the sun. Oh, right? big mm-hmm. time. Rain. Some people do rain. Kind of a bitch at times, though, the sun. Yeah. Like if you're an outfielder. I mean, yeah. Just like in general. I mean, yeah. Just like imagine thinking you're tougher than the sun, though. Mm -hmm. The sun? Certainly not. Certainly not. No one is. Uh, We're waiting for Billy to get hooked up here. Some might say that this is the best part of the show. Yeah. I'm I'm not going to say that. But um, if you're hearing two voices that aren't usually on macrodosing, uh, you would be correct. We've got Donnie in studio. We've got Chaps, Uncle Chaps in, in studio. Hope to make you guys a regular rotation on the show as we move to Chicago. Um, Arian's out on paternity leave. Congrats to him. Had sex, confirmed. Hell yeah. Great job, Arian. To completion, too. Nice. Anyone can got put it, it across in. Across the old goal line. Yeah. Shot it deep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're going to be joining us because we're going to talk about North Korea today. And um, it's a very interesting topic. I'm a, I'm a fan of observing North Korea. I, I wouldn't go as far as to say I'm a fan of North Korea, but they're very interesting to there. observe. Mm-hmm. So we're going to be diving into that in a little bit here. Um, and also, just a little housekeeping, Tuesday, day after Labor Day, we've got Sam and we've got Adam from Telemarketers on HBO coming on the show. So uh, check that out. That's your homework. 
you haven't watched Telemarketers, just three episodes long, not that tough to get through. Very interesting characters, super interesting storyline. Smash them three chi and then watch it. Yeah, perfect. That sounds like a great night to me. Mm-hmm. And that movie was made by the Safty brothers. Right? It was it was produced by the Safty brothers. Yeah. Okay. And cool. I think also Danny McBride had something to do with it. All right. Nice. So yeah. And so there's some big cosigns on that. I one. hope Danny McBride makes a show about that, like telemarketer show. Incredible. He could play uh, Pat. Yeah, he could. He would crush it I, as Pat. I think Pat should play Pat though. Yeah, that's like such a character himself, that... like kind of like Larry David, but tell tell Mark. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, Billy, can you hear us? Thumbs up if you can. Billy oh, can't hear no, us. All right, pissed. you guys he's got any upset. takes you want to get off about Billy? Oh, where do I want to start? He's kind of been reminding me of Theo Vaughn lately. He's been having a Theo Vaughn kind of vibe. <laughs> yes, you know, he'd be the first to tell you. Yeah. He gets a lot of comparisons to Theo Vaughn, <laughs> mostly from himself. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, as we wait for Billy to join. Um, what's what's in the news? What do you guys want to get off your chest? Did you see the White Sox uh, update? Yeah, I, w- I want to hear your take on that because my theory is that that woman, and to, to back up a little bit, there were gunshots it's- fired. It's Billy. Okay. It's oh, hey, guys. Blank. What's up? Yeah, what's up, Billy? What's up? Well, how I like how we? assessment was they have to plug some stuff in. Yeah. <laughs> we No, I'm just telling. I'm just Our side's been good the whole time since 1 o'clock. I think you're right. I think they had. Are you trying to start a in. New York Chicago beef right now? <laughs> no, no. There's many others yeah, trying. We weren't going to let that happen. No, no, no. no. How are you guys doing? I'm. Pumped. We're doing great, Billy. We're just we we're talking about the uh, the Chicago White Sox incident where there were some shots fired, at least one shot, maybe two shots fired in the outfield stands and left field of the White Sox game, and um, the police just came out and said that. Uh, it was a woman that ended up with one of the gunshots. She tried to conceal a handgun in the folds of her belly fat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She brought it into the Classic. game. The gun went off, the old Flaxico Burris, mm-hmm. and she grazed herself and I think hit another lady in the leg. Yeah, someone else got hit too. So um, my theory on that is that she had a gun for self-protection in her bed, as one does, <laughs> and she rolled over on it in the middle of the night. It got wedged, and she forgot about it. Her she stomach ate right. the gun. She didn't know that yeah. it was there when she went into the game. And then, much to her chagrin, it was, in fact, there, and she shot herself in the stomach. I'm yeah. a big weapon safety guy. I don't know how that goes off in your belt button. I just don't know how you have that happen. Yeah. Well, once An she Audi. Could, an Audi. She could, could put be it an Audi. in her pants, I'd, I'd assume, once you get it in. I don't know how putting it in your stomach like conceals it from do they not have a metal detector or something that was my whole concern with the story is how do you get a gun into a baseball well, it's like that gif that goes around in the video where the dude's just yeah. like patting they don't give a shit yeah Why no one's they, gonna open up a roll that's yeah, for sure they're making like 16 bucks an hour doing that well like right? i went to wrigley last night and they don't even have they don't even look like metal detectors anymore it's just too I guess it bears a resemblance to a metal detector it's just two vertical columns and you walk through and i guess they're supposed to be able to see stuff on a screen, but like clearly oh, those it's like are a, working. It's like a TSA. Yeah, like it's not a metal detector. Kind of, yeah. I haven't seen those. Yeah. So, I mean, that must have been the the least amount of gunshots per capita in the whole city in hey, the stadium. I've been in Chicago for a week. <laughs> I've heard zero gunshots. I think that I think we need to move away from the whole Chirac branding. Billy Please gets, come. Shy Billy gets his his so Chicago Shy Tucky. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Shy Tucky. Shy Tuck it. Oh, Shy Tuck it. Wow, yeah. Shy Tuck it. That, that, that's what we call it, at least during the summer months. I think Billy gets the majority of his Chicago facts from the For You page on Twitter. I think that's the videos that they show there. Billy's like, it oh, is scary, though. Chicago. <laughs> you throw on the old Google search for Chicago any given day. Yeah. You're like, oh, man, somebody else got, they got shot. Here. They got got. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. I think mean, that if you're, if you're a, a very overweight person and you go through security, the detector goes off and the wand indicates, the fold area of your stomach. It should be like going through TSA in an airport where a woman can request to have a woman pat down another fat, another guy. fat person yeah. gets to open up your roll and check inside. It's less humiliating that way. Yeah. True. I had a drug dealer in high school and he was extremely obese. He used to hide little bags of drugs in his rolls. And so smart. Like, yeah. I'll take a 20 bag. You just reach in, pull it out. You, you have to disinfect that afterwards. right? <laughs> well, it was in a plastic bag. So, okay. you know, I assume his like roll sweat yeah, I think hasn't leaked balls, through the bag. You're not really concerned about like sanitation. This was right? weed, but uh, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the, 
I know people that were very anti-vax and those same people would just like shovel cocaine up their nose. Yeah. I felt like that would sort of. <laughs> really laughing a little too hard at that one. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen how cocaine's made? Uh, I've not. There's like tons of TikToks of just like people in like Peru making cocaine. And uh, it, it looks. No, no, no. Peru. Okay. They make right, the paste yeah, yeah. in Peru. All right. Yep. The, that's the ones that are going viral. Okay. Uh, but it's hilarious because it, it kind of looks like it should be like an organic substance the way they're making it. Well, it like it starts off as an organic substance. It's made from the cocoa leaf, which a lot of people there just chew recreationally. And that's mm-hmm. kind of like a coffee buzz. But then, yeah, mm-hmm. once they... I, yeah, I don't know how they turn it into a paste, but it definitely becomes a little less. It's pretty organic. organic too. There's not a whole lot of chemicals really. In- there is gasoline, I think. Mm, Gas, because yes. at one at one point they, I just see this like farmer just pour a whole thing of gasoline onto the coca leaves, and I'm like, oh, this is where it gets crazy. They, yeah. they do have a lot of. I've seen those videos. They've got a lot of like uh, uh, lawn equipment laying around where they make them like they might put other chemicals inside of a, a red canister. And it's like, Oh, that looks like gas, but it's really just a, st- it's a storage container, just mm-hmm. like anything else. Mm-hmm. I think you know. can actually sign up for tours. Like uh, if you're down in Colombia or Peru, it's like narco tourism. And then I they to go blindfold you, take you into a jungle. And then you get to see how the whole, how the uh, sausage is made. Artisan does cartels. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can be like the Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> now that we're not owned by Penn, I might be able to get that approved. Yeah, it's true. That, you were just saying you need another trip. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Just go make a little nose beers. Yeah. I mean, that would be a lot safer than buying it off the streets these days. True. Probably. Yeah. Uh, but I guess we're going to get, we've gotten to the bottom of what happened in Chicago. So that's good. Mm-hmm. Figure that out. Uh, it I guess all things considered, it Best is. Case scenario, yeah. yeah for someone to get a gun that now why she felt she needed a gun in the stadium to begin with whole nother story. But I guess, you know, it wasn't someone just getting what? shot random. Wow, I didn't think big T would be coming out against the second amendment today. Yeah. Wow. Shocking. There are, gun there, free are zones work. there are big places. Right? <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> Clearly they don't. Well, you'd like it to be hardened. Do you like it to be a, a more hardened target where you can't bring a gun to a game? Uh, there are very few places I think you should not be able to take a firearm. I would like maybe like no firearms in uh crowded arenas. Okay. Just other crowded places. Just as long as sports not going on. Yeah, places I go. Okay. That's common where, sense. Where where I can't have one legally, but other people can illegally. Big T wants common sense gun laws for MLB stadiums. Right. Who does it? Okay. <laughs> I love it. Um, chaps, I have a question about gun safety in particular. Because in movies, it seems like uh, people drop firearms a lot. And when they drop them, the gun shoots. Does that happen? Certain kind of guns, it's very rare. Like a M4, uh, AR-15, no. Like that won't happen. But I have seen like an AK like can go off. It depends on really the condition of the weapon, but typically no. So if you drop a handgun on the ground, no. probably not going to fire. Probably not. That but, happens a lot in cartoons. I mean, you'd have to have like the hammer back, like and all kinds of stuff for it to happen. But. That's really, really rare. Okay. But it actually did happen. There was an off-duty cop, and he started breakdancing at a party, and the gun fell out of his pocket, went off, and shot someone. That's a true story. Yeah, it is a true story. I think I actually blogged that story a couple yeah, years ago. Yeah, yeah. Like, it happens, but it's very, very rare. That would be sick if, if he did that on purpose, though. He's <laughs> breakdancing. <laughs> well, he, and he's he did not criminal. shoot a criminal. He shot a random person <laughs> at the party. Uh, Big T had a great day today. We're recording this on Tuesday. Um, I'm going to be out of the office tomorrow playing some some golf with a part of my take boys for a video. So we're recording a little bit early. Uh, Big T joined us on Kentucky Sports Radio today. And the original plan was for Big T to be on there for about five, ten minutes, do a little segment, stir things up a little bit. We we love to needle the Kentucky fans. And we've thought, you know, what better way than for Big T to join part of my take on Kentucky Sports Radio and talk about the University of Tennessee he was such a star. He stuck around for the entire two hour show and all the callers were calling up. They called him big B. That was one of there them. There was all sorts of, you know, big bomb names from said. those slack jawed yokels. But um, yeah, it was, it was fun, I guess. It was fun in a, in a certain sense. What was your favorite Kentucky fun fact? Oh yeah. I mean, you had a lot of them. I, 
so there was one where you mouse trapped yourself. Actually, there were two. One, you start talking about how great of a coach Rick Barnes was. No, I said they have a losing record against Rick Barnes, which is true. Okay, but then you open if your their t- basketball program so great. But then you open yourself up for any conversation about Rick Barnes. That's the problem. With Rick it. Barnes, who's been one of he's a Hall of Fame basketball coach. Oh well, he hasn't really had a lot of success in March. Has Kentucky recently? I'm just saying you open yourself. Also, the- that's the most volatile postseason in sports. It's designed for the best teams to not win. But it's interesting that the great coaches get to Final Fours. Not all that often, but they will at some point. Rick Barnes has been to one. Yeah, with Tennessee soon. Okay, soon. <laughs> uh, but I, the, my other favorite moment, Big T, was when you were talking about uh, how many wins they've had in football compared to how many presidents. Been- Three wins against Tennessee since 1984, four presidents since 2008. There have been more presidents in the last 15 years than they have wins against Tennessee in the last 30. Which also implies that he acknowledges Joe Biden as the president of the United yeah. States. He is the president. Mm-hmm. Okay. There was some chicanery afoot late at night on November, whatever it was, but he's the president. Chicanery. That's a great word. For, uh, for another year or so. Yeah. I am excited though for for people to be like Joe Milton can beat you with your with his legs. He's not a runner. If you if you had to guess, do you think there are more Kentucky football wins against Tennessee since 1984? Okay, cut his mic off. Or <laughs> cut his mic off. Presidents since 2008. We'll have, Which we'll, do you think there are more of? We could have we could have uh, we could have callers wait, call wait, in and address Big, Big T. Big T, did you just admit that that sleepy Joe Biden won the election? <laughs> You did. It sounds like you, you just did. did. You did. You got gotcha. you. you. Yes. You he, he won the election at okay. three in the morning. Okay. Uh, <laughs> some of the Republicans are getting some shit for implying that Joe Biden's not going to live through his second term. I actually think that's it's a it's a conversation worth having. It's right? the best that's, case scenario for him that's too. Fine. Yeah. Like you get remembered if you die in office. That's true. Yeah. He's not running for a second term. You think he's going to bow out? I do too. I think there is going to be a staged a event. Coup? <laughs> that will uh they'll be like oh joe that's real unfortunate that you're uh you can't run anymore guess we need to go get gavin newsom and it well the 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 picture of him on a flight to ukraine i think they're gonna expel him his own party's gonna cannibalize him and kick him out what happened on that just flight? because it i don't know there's just a picture of him on a flight to ukraine oh like, like back in 2015 oh you're you're still going with the the hunter biden thing is going to catch up to him I mean, it's coming out. Reported. I mean, it's it's like now all coming out. So I I don't. Is is it unusual for a vice president to visit an ally? <laughs> yeah. In a very strategic part of the world against one of our biggest foes that borders it. Look, I mean, I, I don't think he's gonna make it. I don't think Kamala is gonna make it either, for to be the next running Democratic nominee. So he's gonna die. I, I don't know what they're gonna do. No, she I don't think Kamala. Like I don't think they're gonna run Kamala. Yeah, do you think they'll run Kamala? No, it'd be dumb. It'd be very dumb. Yeah, so I don't think they're gonna run Joe either. But they need an excuse to not run him. So well, I think they're actually trying Joe, to make him unpopular. They won't just be like Harris. You're gonna Dude, go be the nominee. I will so, have an actual. I think Gavin Newsom could be hand selected. I think I, he could be very well. Could be for sure. I also think the governor of Maryland would be a good choice. What's his I, name? Well, who, Matthew. I mean, who's that? I don't, know. The, I don't know of him. He Philly just, doesn't even know him, chaps. How could he get elected? Governor Matthews from Maryland. I mean, you Google governor of Maryland, and that's yeah. him. No, but like name name, name recognition's big when they're sure. like selected. At somebody. first, yeah. Like at, yeah. when you're going out there. But Barack Obama wasn't a household name when he won. Well, his Democratic, uh, uh, when he was at the convention, his speech. Like you know, like speaker, I, but he wasn't yeah. known at all before that. Yeah. Bill well, Clinton's actually get... younger than Joe Biden. That's wild. he could always pull a Roosevelt run for a third term. So is Dan Quell. A lot of people are younger than Joe Dan Biden. Quell's yeah, legit long, younger than both Trump and that's a, that's like Dan Quell was the where VP like, of yeah. the first Bush. HW, yeah. Holy shit, he's that's younger. unbelievable. He's yeah. like seventy-two or something like that. Seventy-two or seventy-four because he was like forty-five when he went into office. You know, what? I I do think that they should open up. Um, just nonstop Hunter Biden investigations. Just so we can find more <laughs> hilarious stuff out about. Him. Not just him, but Bo. I mean, I realize that he passed away, but you got to investigate him too. Is there anything about Bo? No, he's a Navy dude, pretty honorable guy. But yeah, just he was might the, as well do it. He, just he make, was the golden son, right? It was yeah. Goofus and Gallup. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, Bo and Hunter. But I want to know. I want to see all the pictures of Hunter smoking crack. I need more of those. I need more of the prostitute stories. I need a couple more dick pics too. Yeah, yeah. 
I the could, first I, son's dick. I, I need could, that. I could deal with all of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I don't know if the flight to Ukraine is what's going to be the Democrats. I think if anything, Billy, they would just say medical issues. They'll just be like, he's sick. Yeah. And then everybody would believe it. Yeah, of course. I mean, why would you not? Medical issues. He's older than Dan Quayle. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Who's Dan Quill? He was the VP for the first Bush. H.W. Bush. Oh. Uh, Here's how much American time. politics have changed True. in the last like. But isn't that years. saying something, Billy? That yeah. guy yeah. was the vice president 30 years ago and he's younger than the two major parties nominee. Crazy. That, that is insane. Everyone laughed at him and, and it kind of made him unreelectable because he didn't know how to spell the word potato. And now look at Twitter from yeah. anybody running. Yeah, he was he was judging like a first grade spelling bee and the word was potato. And I think the way that it went was the uh, contestant, the first grader, spelled it P-O-T-A-T-O-E. And Dan Quayle was like, yes, that's correct. And I probably every, would have said the same thing. And then everyone was like, look at this fucking idiot. This guy, this guy can't be in politics. Yeah. <laughs> that got him kicked out. Uh, Howard Dean's scream got yeah. him kicked yes. out. Yes. I was just Googling who that guy was because, like, we should run him. Yeah. We just have him scream. Yeah. yeah. That would be a nothing burger. No, no one would care. No one would care. I at mean, all. that happens 87 times. All, uh, Ramaswamy was rapping to Eminem, which I feel like in 2016 would have been like a huge thing and like nobody really cared. What was he doing? He was at the Iowa State Fair, I think, and he uh, rapped. Um, I forget the song, but it was an Eminem song. Was it Lose Yourself? I think so. I, do. I forget, yeah. Exactly, but yeah, I believe it was. And, uh, and like, it wasn't even really a big story. So big T, I know that you're a Ramaswamy guy. I am. I've been driving the Vivek train. I went the other day and found my first text about Vivek. It was in February. I was early on this. February this year. Correct. Okay. Um, my general impression of Vivek during the debate, I did watch the debate. It's pretty fucking annoying. I disagree. He's just kind of annoying. Gives off nerd vibes. Yeah, like, but so he's I, really intelligent. No, like annoying, <laughs> annoying nerd. I don't. I, I think most people disagree with you on he's that. He's got a shitty I, grin. Yeah, you know he's got that a whole grin. smudgy. That whole podium was just all kind of losers. I agree. Like, I got. I gotta say. Yeah, uh, DeSantis, not it, not him. Uh, it's weird. He's got a, decidedly <laughs> not him. Definitely like not human vibes. The funniest part of the debate was when they asked if they would support Donald Trump if he was the nominee. And then people raised their hands. And then gradually, Mike Pence was like, yeah. And Mike Pence cucked himself so bad. Yeah. Like this guy wanted to kill you. <laughs> right. He wanted to he wanted to see your body hanging limp uh, just like two and a half years ago. And Mike Pence was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> that, that loser's not going to get anything. But um, Chris Christie, loser. Oh, Ben, a huge loser. I can't believe the he's running loser. again. <laughs> well, not yet. He's still what? It's a pretty chunky guy still. If Chris, yeah. but the thing about Chris Christie was, if he was skinny, I think, I think he would be more unlikable. Oh yeah, because he's fat, and so I always expect something jovial to come out of him, something jolly, and then he just says stupid shit, and he's a bully, and everyone's like, oh yeah, this guy sucks, but. If he was skinny, I think it would be worse. I think people would just be like, this guy is maybe maybe the last politician on earth I'd vote for. And you can't be so hardcore like he's so anti-Trump now, which I get, like being super anti-Trump. But he also, you can't act like you were that when he made you eat meatloaf at the White House when you didn't even want meatloaf. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, he ordered for him. <laughs> yeah. And big boy over here will have the loaf. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, I don't really like meatloaf. It doesn't matter. You're having the meatloaf. Eat boy. Dude. Yeah, everybody else is eating ice cream and they gave <laughs> Christy meatloaf. If you got if you got a FUPA in this day and age with the with Ozempic and all the medical shit that's getting everyone skinny, like come on. That's my biggest fear in life is developing a FUPA. Yeah. I think is but it you could hide a gun? Gun? is it genetic? Because I I think it's how you wear your clothes, though, because like fat people can avoid having a fupa if they just wear different clothes. Yeah. Like you just have a larger gut, but when you try to put the pants over your gut, then it turns into a fupa. It's like the gut, right? Yeah, yeah, I would much rather have like a hanging gut than a fupa. Yeah, you gotta you gotta know the pants height. Yeah, I think having a uh, the right pants placement is key. Where I would just wear athletic 
shorts, I think. Just like gym shorts all the time. Oh, but then you start risking a fupa falling down and you just, that's a bad look. Yeah, oh, so the fupa gets a little soggy. It hangs down below your shirt mm-hmm. over the belt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then you get an apron. Who would you guys say are the all time fupa people? I mean, Christy is top tier. That mm. picture of him playing our pitching baseball yeah. pants. And he had, like the white baseball <laughs> pants. That's, I mean, that is the quintessential fupa. It is. Uh, so. Charlie Weiss had quite the fupa as well. Yeah. Who was the other coach at Kansas? Mangino. <laughs> yeah. yeah Mangino's got a mangina. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah. So the good the coach though got Kansas term, almost to the national championship. What's that, Billy? The scientific term is paniculus. paniculus. Yeah. Paniculus. An upper pubic region paniculus it can be the result of obesity and be mistaken for a tumor or hernia. Yeah. So it can be removed. A fupa. Yeah. Just uh, with like liposuction? Oh, it can wait. be removed during abdominal paniculectomy. But that's got to be if you're skinny and you have that condition. That can't be like if you're a fat cell and you have it. No, right? if you Google it. Yeah, an excess of skin and fat. Oh, Jesus Christ. There are some serious paniculuses. Don't uh, Google Bill paniculus Parcells, because some of them dip over and look too. like a... Uh, it can get bad. There's there's five stages of paniculus. And, How big uh, of a this, gun could you hide in your fupa in the fifth stage? In the fifth stage, you could ha- you could you could hide a, a whole sniper a drone, a whole yeah. long gun, a whole Just long throw a drone gun. in there. Yeah, I got an Amram missile. <laughs> I'm looking at pictures of Bill Parcells. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Old pictures. I, these look pretty old. He definitely had a fupa. Yeah, he had a fupa. Bill Parcells. You got a fupa. Look- I'm he lost some that. weight at there. That's that's still like the one you just looked at was like a young Parcells. You got to look like I'm yeah. looking at Patriots, Giants days when he yeah. That's Our all Cowboys. soda. That's where soda goes. Yeah, the, I mean all those like super duper like 500 pound like chaps. You're an expert. I am. Yeah, 600 pound life. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it mostly just like high like. High sugar high intake salt. that just destroys yeah, high the liver and ability. Salt. Mm-hmm. Like, like I don't. People well, are my friends at Thousand Pound Sisters. Their yeah, she said that. Well, both of them they drink about 10, 12 sodas a day. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean yeah. if Frank the Tank could start drinking seltzer over soda, he'd be the size of Big T. I would yep. say. Wow. I don't what know that I like that sense. <laughs> Actually, Frank the Tank. That would Tank's be a huge accomplishment. Frank the Tank. Frank. We need to celebrate Frank the Tank. He's lost some. He's lost yeah. a ton of weight. A yeah. ton. Frank is he's in maybe in the best shape of his life. I'd right? say he's constantly on the move. Since he started, he's got to be down buck fifty at least. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. he's like even his legs look better. Like yeah. he had the hematomas. Yep. Even that has improved a lot. Great. I mean. He's also eating better because he's making like 15 grand a week on Cameo. Yeah. So he's got that, a lot of things that, going for him. The 15 grand is not going to health food. It's going to more salt. Oh, I disagree. He's more full organic Frank now. I don't think we're ready for a hot Frank. Oh, I wow. Wait, I let's just, hot boy let's summer just say, Frank edition. Glow up. Let's say the man, you know, gets washboard abs. I, I don't think we could handle that. Maybe the Mets Only fans would make his Cameo look like nothing. Yeah. yeah. Only Franks. <laughs> yeah, only Franks. Uh, what else we want to get I, into? I'd subscribe. I don't care how much it was. If Frank was on OnlyFans, I'm watching. Yeah. If, if Well, would you subscribe if, if he wasn't showing anything? Yeah. Just, Just to support. Support the homie. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, do any guy? Do any guys at Barstool Sports have, yeah. have OnlyFans? Pat does. I used and to have he? a Billy Feetball. And ball. he actually, I think he makes a solid amount. Like he, yeah, he does. He does okay, and he doesn't post anything too risque. But there's definitely dudes out there. How close you got to go? I know he, he'll he'll post pics of his feet, pics of him in a bathing suit. Yeah, I I feel like guys. If you're into guys, there's no shortage of dudes that will just show you their dick out there. Oh yeah, <laughs> you don't have to. It's not like a woman where it's like you have to work for it. So would you do this? My friend was in New Orleans. He was trying to buy some drugs, and a guy. Took him in the back. He goes, I'll give you this for free. You just have to show me your penis for five seconds. Deal. Oh, How much was it going to cost? It's probably going to be like 50 to to $100. Is this friend in the room with us right now? No, 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 he's not. That's a no, big no, difference. The difference <laughs> between 50 me. and 100 is stark. 
All right, say if it was 100 bucks, you just have to show this guy your penis. He doesn't touch it. You just have to show it to him for, you know, maybe five, 10 seconds. Dude, I'd, re- I'd want to go there every day. Like if I could do that every day, <laughs> yeah. that's basically, be, that's better than being like an Uber Eats driver. <laughs> yeah. I'd be scared you try to grab it. Like it's just, he's just yeah, trying to get you to do that, it. That is a risk. <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure. Like, you could still slap yeah, away though, shit. right? Yeah. Excuse me. I'd be like, ah, ah, ah. More money. <laughs> Don't touch. No. $100 was a no touching rule. What do you take me for? You're going to need to throw another little 25 spot on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else we got to get into before North Korea talk? Billy, what's I mean, on your brain? What are you beat off about? Uh, Big T, did you see the video of the stop oil protesters in Nevada outside Burning Man who just got messed up by reservation police? I have not. Hey, remember you said that you loved seeing uh, the people who sit on roads get like owned? Yes. Well, this one is one for you because reservation police don't have to abide by the Constitution. So they just messed up all these protesters. And it was one of the it was a very funny video. I'll look into it. Were they just like punching them in the face or? Yeah, it was pretty brutal. I don't know if it was hilarious. Like they (laughs) they ran like damn near ran them over. (laughs) Well, if you're if uh, I've said if you're blocking traffic, though, it's not the worst thing in the world. Traffic to nowhere. The reason uh, okay, it's funny I haven't seen the video. They, I, I can't speak. Is that they didn't know they were on a uh, native reservation. So they didn't know that they could, uh, you know, peacefully protest legally on that land. So they thought they were like under the U.S. Constitution and then they just got blown up. And it was just like, what the fuck? Is that true that the U.S. Constitution doesn't pertain to native lands? Res- re- res- I mean, I think so when I was reading about it, it was like reservation police don't have to abide by certain rules. Like, you know, same reason why they can have casinos. They're on looser. The but that like, I mean, the yeah. Constitution is not suspended on reservations. There's certain it, rules that are like that you don't have, like taxation doesn't exist. Like so there's certain things, but a complete throw out. Like if you kill somebody on a reservation, you're still going to a state penitentiary. Yeah. Like it, you're there's it's not a lawless land. I think it has to do with like right to protest and stuff doesn't apply there. We're going to fact or check so, that. One of those laws. We'll, we'll fact check it. But for some reason, what they did was totally lawful. But like if you were going to do your research, like if you're going to block traffic somewhere, try to make sure it's not the one place where like you can get messed with. Yeah. Just hey, Billy, I got a question for you. Um, you had an assignment that you were going to do today. Do you I that did assignment? it. I did it. Okay. What was the assignment? Uh, I made the macrodosing, uh, how do we describe it in the group chat? How Arian wanted us to describe it? Songs that white people can't help but sing along to. Mm. We did that and uh, all the music we listened to. That is out on the macrodosing Spotify. If you go to macrodosing podcast on Spotify, you'll find the podcast playlist. And I'm halfway through uh, the song chevy wheel about our time through america okay so you're wow. halfway through it okay Do yeah but like i, I actually am trying to match it up verse for verse with the actual song just give me a taste give me one of the verses okay heading down south to the land of skyline leaving the boomer hopping on 95 asking the mayor if he saw harambe in the sights that's good that's a good start all right i like it billy we made it through the ice so storm he- in seven-ish hours, pulled into a pyramid filled with woods and fish towers. Fish and I'm towers. hoping for Coors Light not to get carjacked tonight. All right. All right. We're off to a good start. That's really good, Billy. I don't think any word rhymed in the first verse. Yes, it did. Skyline, 95 and sight. Line and five. <laughs> okay. If you if you if you like put some iteration into there with like some like you know sing song mm-hmm. accent, I mean, you can make T Pain rhymed yeah. mansion in Wisconsin. So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's all it's all how you perform it. They all end with E except sight. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> That's all you need. Yep. All right, good job, Billy. I'm pleasantly surprised. Nice. Work. Remember, this was only a 24 hour turnaround. It was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't you can't rush art. That's very nope. true. Uh, you guys want to get into North Korea? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I don't want to go. go. You don't want to go? 
I don't want to go I into could, North Korea. I could see you being this, this uh, I was going to say generations, but this uh, micro generations Otto Wambler. Warm beer. Warm, Warm beer. beer. RIP. I prefer I Coors Light. Yeah. Uh, so where do we want to start? Uh, oh, I mean. Why don't we start turn of the century, 1900s? This, like... The, the groundwork for the situation on the Korean Peninsula is really found in uh, the Sino-Japanese War. Sino, yeah. Around 18... Yeah. Sino. No, it's with an S. Yep. Yeah. For some yep. reason, they describe it with an S. Sino-Japanese War. And that's like a weird... What other way. letter would you use to make that sound? S-I-N-O, mm -hmm. representing of China. As a, like, that's kind of oh, weird. I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. But uh, in 1898, China and Japan uh, fought over those regions, and Japan ended up having more influence uh, over Korea, put them under sub subjugation for many, many years until the Russo-Japanese War, which was ended by my favorite Teddy Roosevelt in, I think, 1902. Mm -hmm. uh, Russia got their ass kicked. Yeah. Oh, but that was actually the last battle in which you know the beginning season of a uh, beginning uh scene in troy where they just have two dudes fight instead of the whole army's fight mm. sort of like a david and goliath scenario mm -hmm. I like so that. a a serbian um sword not a fencer but basically fought a samurai in sword to sword combat to decide who wins the battle i actually gotta look this one up because i forgot about this until now um but when the Russo-Japanese War ended, there was influence in the region. Japan then took it back over and run up to World War II. World War II ends. Korea is divided like Germany into uh, a Russian and Chinese influence north and a allied capitalist south. And uh, that's sort of where we find the beginning of all this because Kim song ju who had been fighting the Japanese in Manchuria, who was living in China more than he even was in Korea, was sort of chosen as the leader of this new North Korea that's had, you know, communist influences. And this guy didn't even speak Korean. What? So damn. He didn't even speak Korean. The Soviets wrote all of his speeches to that he wrote read out to the rest of the North Korean population because he only knew Chinese. That's something very interesting. So Kim Jong un's grandfather is this guy who is a guerrilla fighter against the Japanese. He was raised up by the Soviets. Didn't know Korean. That's fascinating. Yeah. And he really didn't like the Americans being in South Korea, which started the Korean War, because he wanted to get all foreign influence out of Korea and just have it be, you know, a fully independent state. Yeah. He was a big cult of personality guy, uh, sought to reunite. But South Korea wasn't doing that good of stuff back then. They were like forcing anyone who they thought were communist sympathizers into re-education camps. Um, anybody in the Communist Party of South Korea into education camps. And the South Koreans were like literally slaughtering a lot of communists at the time. This is one of those things they don't tell you in the rah-rah American war machine good part. But... It, there was a lot of anti-communist persecution in the South that sort of caused the North to sort of justify, you know, invading the South. And they took over almost the whole peninsula. Hmm. Once they got some help from China, like at one point, South Korea and the U.S. was just dominating the war. They got close to the Chinese border and then China was like sending the dogs. Mm. Yeah. They sent in all of their troops and then we got pushed like all the way back down. Yeah, in, in the beat. In the beginning of the war, there uh, everyone was pushed down to Pusan. Um, Truman didn't want the domino effect of communism prevailing in the region. So the U.S. pushed for a resolution through the U.N. Security Council. The only reason the USSR didn't use their veto was because at the time they were boycotting uh, the Security Council because um, the communist government of China was not allowed to have a seat. But Taiwan the nationalist government that fled China, we spoke about this uh, last episode, had a seat at the Security Council, whereas 
the actual in charge Communist Party did not. So this this was sort of a, a, a perfect storm for the U.S. to make the U.N. Security Council allow them to deploy U.S. troops into Korea. And the first guys to show up uh, kind of got their shit rocked. The task force Smith U.S. troops who first got deployed, they were a bunch of undertrained younger guys who had maybe only been trained for eight months. They were sent in with World War II era weapons and they just got stormed by the North Korean troops who were going in with tanks. They only had six anti-tank grenades to take them out and uh, they just got blown past. They had they suffered almost 50 percent casualties and uh, the Koreans were like winning the North Koreans were winning the first part, but then the U.S. were able to push them back to the Chinese border, as we talked about, until China sent quarter of a million troops. Now, a lot of the accounts from uh, U.S. soldiers in the Korean War were a, a lot of the inspiration for zombie movies because just the hordes of people coming after uh, U.S. positions like inspired like a lot of like the uh, hordes of zombies because they just threw people at them. Would you say that the Korean War was – that's like a forgotten war in U.S. Yeah. history. Easily. And I think it's one of the most brutal wars in American history yeah. too. Like some of the things that you see if you talk to old Korean War veterans, it is chilling. Like the people that were in the Chosen Reservoir, the Chosen Frozen with Chesty Puller, who I have tattooed on my arm. He's the Sweet. most famous Marine, I, I would say, five Navy crosses. Like that's the medal just below the Medal of Honor. Got it five times, which is insane. They would have to go out because it was so cold whenever they were fighting this big affront, this big frontal assault. They would, in order to survive, they had to do two two things. One, you have to eat, and two, you have to practice to kill people. They would do it at the same exact time. Because their rations were so frozen, they would set them up on fence posts and they would shoot the rations because they didn't have enough dry wood to create fire. So they would go out and have to shoot the rations and then they would put that in their mouth and wait for it to dry they also had their gloves their shooting gloves at the time because they were from world war ii which was only like 14 years before they had they would have they would cut one finger out so that they could have a trigger finger exposed that finger would get frostbite they would cut it off and have their middle finger be their next trigger finger some guys so if you see korean war veterans come back and they're missing fingers it's because they cut them off themselves holy shit Wow. I think the Korean War gets uh, – because Vietnam was, like, right on the heels of it, you know, 10, 15 yeah, same years thing. later. Same, same gap from World War II to Korea. Right, Korea so to... that one gets kind of forgotten about because we talk about Vietnam so much. And the war fatigue. Like, and I think we're experiencing that now in the country with the war fatigue after World War II. People didn't want to sign up. Like, yeah. They, they didn't want to go. And you'll have that now. Like, if we had another widespread conflict, one, because of the political divisiveness – I don't know if we'd have enough volunteers to do what we need to, unless there was a huge strike like on 9-11 again. Mm -hmm. If there was just another adversary like Korea who really didn't do anything to mainland America, we'd have the same exact result as we did mm -hmm. because people are just tired of it. Yeah, I mean, we just got out yeah. of World War II, what, five years before the Korean War started? Mm -hmm. No wonder they were they didn't have like well-trained troops. If you just got done fighting in World War II and then five years later, you, you just got done like it was the war to end all wars. Mm -hmm. and they're like, actually, we got to go back over there. So going to need you back in training camp soon. Fuck that. And that gap seems small, like it seems big, right? In your memory, because you think World War II, Korea, and then Vietnam, it seems like a lot longer than that five or six years. But the technology wasn't that old. Like it really wasn't. Like the things that they were fighting with, it just wasn't good comparatively. But the other countries were innovated while we were fighting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, it's and a, the Korean it's, War it's is crazy. still not over. Yeah, no. good point. It was never well, ended. They just called a ceasefire. I saw some. It's the last recently, declared war too. They, did they like they, finally end it in the past yeah, year? Yeah, they did. I they think, did. It, uh, I, I think it was I like six did, weeks ago. Right? I think it was like six weeks ago. Oh shit! Did we win? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we won. Let's go. Back on the winning well, side, I baby. I love it. They had to wait and <laughs> well, see, like, all right, which country is going to turn out better, north right, or south? Yeah. And now they can finally say, <laughs> "Yep, you guys won." Maybe that's the reason why that one army kid that recently defected and went over there. Yeah, what was the story with that guy? <laughs> so he got in trouble for assault um, in South Korea, and he was going to go to jail for a while. But they came up because there's whenever you're in a different country on orders, there's a status of for forces agreement, a self agreement. 
So a lot of times the country that is the host country will allow you to go back so you don't have to stay in their prison. And when you don't, it's actually kind of a weird thing. Like there's a case going on right now in Japan where there's a Navy lieutenant who is trying to come home and uh, they won't let him come home because he assaulted a or he got into a wreck and it killed somebody in Japan, so they won't mm -hmm. let him leave. So this guy was supposed to come back to the United States and face punishment from the U.S. government for what he did there under the UCMJ, the Uniform Code of Military Justice, which um, is the governing laws of military members overseas and domestic. So he was going to go back to face that punishment, and in order to not do that, he decided – instead of going to a brig for 30 days in America, it would be a better idea to run across the DMZ and go into North Korea. Bad idea. <laughs> That's Horrible idea. Worst yeah. idea. Um, and they're not even, they haven't, as far as I know, even up to today, they haven't even responded about from U.S. inquiries about how he's doing or anything like that. They just act like it doesn't didn't happen. Would you rather do 30 days in a North Korean prison or two years in an American prison? 30 two days. Years. I think uh, what Two American years. prison? Uh, let's well, say mm, Sing Sing. Is that, still still open? Is that still open? Oh no, no. But you're let's so you're talking ADX. like a maximum security. ADX, ADX Florence. That's our, our worst Island. is ADX Florence. Okay. Have you guys ever done an episode on ADX Florence? Which no. which one is that? Is that That's the Alcatraz, the Denver? Rockies? Yes. Yeah. I would love yeah. to be on an episode about that. I've read so much shit about it. It's fascinating. I would go so, to North Korea a million times out of a million before I went to ADX Florence. That's where um, the Unabomber is, That's right? where yeah. the Unabomber Sarnoff, is. El right? Chapo is there. Mm -hmm. um, the Boston episode. Bomber is there. Yeah. Like Basically, it, the who's who of the worst people in American society are at ADX Florence. If you're a, if you're a corrections officer at ADX Florence and you deal with like the worst people ever, do you go home and you just like hate humans? You don't work with them though. Like they are legitimately caged animals. Like they they stay in a six by six cage. The only thing that's inside of it is a mattress that's about a quarter of an inch thick to half an inch thick on concrete. They have a concrete toilet. They have a and that's it. It's a concrete toilet a concrete bed and that's it and they don't get to go outside they're able to leave their cells 15 minutes a week they have the ability to shoot you on site if you try to touch one of the guards you if you try to speak to them if you try to speak to a guard or a nurse or touch them or anything like that you go into a deeper hole that's only like three three by three area it's oh, it's a Christ. human it's a there's guys in there now the shoe bomber is there richard reed yeah and his his attorneys have said that he has begged and pleaded to go back to Guantanamo Bay. Holy shit. Wow. No, oh there's God, one thing that Azkaban. I liked about that's, that though. That's kind of awesome. One thing I like about that is the concrete toilet. <laughs> yeah. That thing could take a beating. Oh yeah. I would actually not mind shitting into my own personal concrete toilet. Yeah. That thing's never going to We should talk about ADX Florence one time. Okay. I'm down for that. Yeah. Do uh you, I was going to ask when you asked that though. I was going to say what is the what is the minimum length of time, or I guess, what is the maximum length of time you could be sentenced to in an American prison where you'd be like, North Korea might be a better option? I mean, it depend, I think it depends on the prison, for sure. Let's say a, a medium secure, your run-of-the-mill pris. Which one would I rather do? I think it would be a year to a month. I think that would be my ratio, a year to a month. Meaning, no, I'm not. Is he going to go to jail in North Korea, or is it he depends? If he comes out and makes a bunch of videos, like so, that's what I'm saying. Like I'm saying, it, rather than go to prison in America, you go to North Korea and like just live basically for the rest of your life. I mean, if you there, I could see on the North Korean side if you have a uniformed troop that ran across to be there. Oh, they did release one statement. They said that he did it because he was tired of the racial injustices in America and the social system in America is no longer supporting people like him. So that's the reason why he wanted to go to North Korea for a, a more fair shot. So I think if he made videos like that, that they could use as propaganda, he might be treated decently. Yeah, I could definitely see that. He just but like, like a, It's like yeah. some of those folks that were in Hanoi, like at the Hanoi Hilton where they were more willing to make videos so they were more they were treated more fairly like there was a I had a guy on 0 block 30 a couple months ago 
Um, I've actually had two that were in at the same time as John McCain. One of them was the cellmate of J John McCain, like right next door. And he was in Hanoi for six and a half years. And he talked, he talked a little bit about that. Yeah. I, I think that would be the way to go. Just be like, I will be, I'll be a mouthpiece. Yeah. Just use me. Yeah. And everybody's like, so, Oh, Songberg McCain. Well, first of all, he didn't do that. Like the things that McCain, did you guys know that they suspended McCain from the air by hooks, like in his back. I did and, not know that. And suspended no. him, and they would, right before he would die, yeah. they would take him back down and then do it again. Yeah, that's the thing. I feel like, and it, then people call him Songbird. It's just so unbelievably messed up. If you if you go to prison in North Korea, I feel like that's what they would do. They would just get you as close to dying as possible without well, dying. As an they enemy, returned for sure. Otto Warmbier. He was only in jail for like a couple months, and then they returned him to the U.S. in a coma. And it's like, what did you do to this kid to to put him in a coma? That's right. why I would rather do U.S. prison for two years because I know that there's dudes who survived prison. I don't know many Americans who have survived survived North Korean work camps. That's why I rather do. Yeah, yeah. I think it just uh, really depends on how you were captured too. Like this kid, he might if he does the propaganda video, he could be treated decently well. I kind of doubt that would happen. Like that he would be treated well, but the situation around it is just so extraordinary. If somebody doing that. Now, so he was he was not years, the first one to do it. Uh, back in 1962, about like seven Americans defected to North Korea. One of them because he was caught smoking weed while on duty in South Korea and just didn't want to face the punishment <laughs> for that. So then ran to North Korea. The other guy, he did it because he was, quote, I was fed up with my childhood, my marriage, my military life, everything. That sounds There's more only like one place to go. Brother, <laughs> that's called PTSD. Yeah. <laughs> to, to me, that sounds like marriage. He's like, I, I'm going to make a lot of excuses, but I would rather be in North Korea than stay in my marriage. Yes. Yeah. Um, but these guys, they became famous in North Korea for playing evil Americans in a 20-part film series called Nameless Heroes. 20 parts. <laughs> that's like the original Fast and Furious. Yeah. yeah it's wild. Um, and then one of them, yeah, lived in North Korea for the rest of his life. He, he, like, he told someone, he goes, I wouldn't leave North Korea if you put a billion damn dollars of gold on the table. And the hilarious thing is he ended up marrying a woman from Romania in North Korea that he had tricked into traveling there. So he had like said something Jeez. like, hey, just come out for like a week, visit me in North Korea. And then when she arrived, he was like, you can never leave and you're now my wife. That's kind of like, have you guys ever seen the cinematic adventure called Not Without My Daughter? What's that from? I think Susan Sarandon is in it, oh, or okay. one of those people. It looks like Susan Sarandon. Yeah, I, I, it's ringing a bell for me. Where they go, I think it's Iran. They go to Iran and they're going on like a little family vacation and then they're trying to go back and the guy's like, you're not going anywhere. And, and then he lets her leave and she's, but not with the kid. And she's like, I'm not leaving, not without my daughter. It's fantastic. Sounds awesome. Yeah. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. uh, so after, after the Korean war ends uh, six months ago, six weeks ago, <laughs> yeah, six weeks ago no, but yeah. after the armistice is called, um, what happens next, Billy? Oh, well going back to the end of the war, Eisenhower was the one who there was a Truman uh, MacArthur kind of went nuts when they started to lose and they lost back the whole peninsula. He wanted to he nuke like, the entire peninsula. Yeah, right? He was like, yo, Truman, let's nuke this shit. Like, why aren't we using our nukes? Let's not like keep taking else. Let's like, and then uh, Truman was like, you're an insubordination. We're putting Eisenhower. Eisenhower became president. Um, and his first order of business was to stop the containment strategy and just fight to the 38th parallel. And uh, that's where we've been till we ended the war a couple weeks ago. Um, but there. there was 3 million civilian deaths uh, due to the war. And <sighs> it is kind of one of the forgotten wars we've spoken about between Vietnam that got a lot of the press um, and World War II that got a lot of the infamy. As they'll say, both of my grandfathers fought in it and near them would say a word about it uh, the whole time I knew them to my parents either. So it's one of those ones where the media wasn't there that Vietnam had and it wasn't, you know, the shining star of U.S. excellence that World War II was. And then the guys who came back, none of them really spoke about it. So it's kind of one of those wars that we, you know, doesn't have like much of the spotlight it, spotlight as we think but what's really interesting is that 
it was an absolute proxy war between us and the Soviets. There was even Soviet pilots dogfighting, yeah. uh, and China. There was Soviet pilots dogfighting with U.S. pilots, but they were in Chinese marked uh, uh, planes in Chinese jumpsuits, but they were Soviet pilots. So there was Russians fighting directly against the U.S. in the air. What kind of planes were they? Beats me, but I think there was a U.S. Tomcats. There were probably some MiGs. There were not Tomcats. No, definitely not. Learn plane. I, I don't know. I don't know. You should know. What Tom a Tomcat in 1950? A really? Hellcat? I a don't know. They were, they were the a ones Spitfire? that. Spitfire. Do you know the what the Tomcat the is? First ge- you don't even know no, what a Tomcat is. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna on. look it up. Okay. U.S. It's an important fact. Fighter. Also, we need to give jets. President Biden a little shout out. Not many people can say that they ended the two longest wars in American history. That's true. Holy mm-hmm. shit. That's true. Great job, Joe. Mm-hmm. I thought you were going to be like, he fought in the Korean War. <laughs> he <laughs> probably did. For yeah. all His of them. son did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, chaps, a little, little plain aside here. Um, with the U.S. sending and NATO sending F-16s to Ukraine, how does that change the scope of the air-to-air combat over there? I've got my own thoughts, but I was wondering if you had yours. I think it changes it a lot, like just the, based on the capabilities of the planes. But I also don't understand why they waited so long. Yeah. I feel like that was, if you're going to assist and send billions of dollars, do you think Russia is really going to be like, well, they gave them damn near a trillion dollars, but now that they have these F-16s, now we're really pissed. Yeah, the F-16 should have been like the first thing right. that got sent over like there. Like their artillery and anti-aircraft rounds and anti-personnel rounds, like all that kind of stuff, decimated so many of the Russians. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, obviously, they're not in the position without our weapons. This is a huge proxy war, too. Yeah, it really is. It'll just be interesting to see if uh, the electronic warfare components of the F-16, like data link, if that can stand up against the alleged stealth capabilities of the SU, excuse me, the Su-57, which many people are saying way overblown stealth capabilities. I need to bring you on ZBT as our plane expert. You yeah. know infinitely more about planes than I do. Well, well I'm just, he I, didn't know the difference between an F-16 and an 18. Good but point, baby. He, he knows a lot. He knows good a lot. Point. That's why I'm going down this tangent so I can just, I can flex my plane knowledge and get back at all the guys that say I don't know plane. Um, yeah, but it'll, it'll be interesting to see. I think that the F-16s are, they're, they're a beast, man. They're a beast. F-16s, F-15s, that's, those are the workhorses. When you US see military. planes coming overhead and they're on your side and you know the other side doesn't have nearly as many, it is the biggest morale boost when you're on a battlefield ever. Yeah. Like it is absolute. like when an A-10 starts coming and you hear like your platoon leader, platoon sergeant, whoever saying A-10s are in, inbound, you're like, you motherfuckers are about to pay. Mm-hmm. You made a mistake. <laughs> you're, not, you're They're going to have to identify you by pieces of your clothing. Hell Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. Like, you do battle damage assessment and you go out after an A-10 gun run, you're looking for pieces of clothing. You're not looking for pieces of people. Chaps, did you ever see any enemy uh, planes? Like They don't have them. Did, yeah. Did Saddam have any planes? Yeah, they had had planes at the time, but that was shock and awe. Took care of basically all of that. Shot them before they even got off the ground, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And also, we we dominated the... uh, the Iraqi Air Force in the first Gulf War. Yeah. So S- Saddam knew that like he couldn't stand up to us. That was awesome. Didn't take long at all. That's some of my most vivid memories as a kid is watching those, the explosions underneath like the night vision goggles on CNN or whatever yep. and being like, oh my God. Yeah, we're doing the damn thing. Yeah. Um, all right, so Billy, back to the end of the Korean War. Yeah, and Eisenhower ended it. And basically gave the, his exiting speech out of office about the military industrial complex. Uh, and, you know, then from there, uh, Kim, the first Kim Song was still in power until he died. And then Kim Jong Il came into power. Mm-hmm. And this he was, guy's father. He was, uh, he was the first one that was looked at as a god, right? Mm-hmm. They thought yeah. he was god. No, yeah. the. The one who founded North Korea was seen as a god. He was yeah, the, god. the first the personality. One too. But wasn't yeah. that after? Like, wasn't that kind of post mortem? That wasn't like while he was alive. It was after, right? Yeah, maybe post mortem. Yeah. They were like, okay, like this guy was a god, but now you also have to acknowledge his son as right. like a living. God. I think I'm not positive, but I think that's how it went down. 
I could I could see that. I know that like his father, the founder of North Korea, is celebrated way more than he is. Right. Because I think North Korea, I know it was never a great place to live, but it started going real downhill with Kim Jong Il, his son, because mm-hmm. he started focusing only on the military, and that's which like that's what led to North Koreans not having enough food, not having jobs. Because he's the one that made it a lot more of the hermit nation, right? Like completely cut it off from the rest of the world. Yeah. Yeah, because I think his dad at least had relations, like solid relationships with Moscow, China, and stuff, and then his dad like really started to cut ties to the point where North Korea was their own. Like they had zero friends. That's sad. Everybody needs a friend. I know. I mean, that's uh, the song in Team America, World Police. I'm so lonely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh my. I'm sure he was very Kim lonely. Kim Il-sung. Kim Il-sung died in 1994. Yep. I did not know no, that. I- Kim, oh, that's wow. Kim yeah. Il-sung, right? And then we had Kim yeah. Jong Un. Il, yeah. Il, and yeah. then Kim Jong Un. No, no, the, the OG guy died in '94. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and he was then in he, power. So Kim Jong Il only came to power in '94 when his dad died, right? Yeah. 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 So um, wh- one of the things I learned about North Korea reading Escape from Camp 14, which is a phenomenal book. Some of it has been walked back recently. It's about a survivor of uh, Pack, prison right? camp. Isn't that her? Yomi Pack? It is. Let's see. What's this guy's name here? The Joe Rogan guest? No. Oh, Shin, I know. I read her book. Shin, okay. I haven't read that. Shin Dong Yuk. A lot of it got Yuk. debunked, too. Okay. Yeah, Chap said she's full of shit. Uh, yeah. I've, I've been seeing a lot of that online. Well, they, this guy, he claimed that he, uh, he spent a lot of time in North Korean prison, escaped, and he told a lot of the story, but he... Also left a lot of stuff out, like apparently he escaped to China early in his life, came back, went back into a prison system. Both his parents were executed, and I guess he lied about how he was tortured because he was tortured a lot worse than what he said was in the book. So his lies are kind of spread out all over the map, but you got to give this guy like a little bit of leeway because he's been psychologically tortured his entire life. Um, But a lot of the stuff that he says has been confirmed. I remember reading about how North Korea made their money in that book because you got to imagine like, okay, they don't have a robust agricultural system. What they do make goes mostly to their military and yeah, they trade some of it and they, they make some money that way. But the majority of money coming into North Korea, at least since like the nineties was made via um, insurance scams. So insurance fraud, what they would do would be, they would, they would have a giant factory and they would get Lloyd's of London or another international insurance agency to come in and insure the factory for, let's say, $300 million. And the factory probably wasn't worth that much, but it was like kind of ballpark if it had been running at full capacity. And so Lloyd's would insure it. And then North Korea would make up a fake fire and say, sorry, the entire factory was destroyed. We need all the insurance money for it. You owe us 300 million bucks. Lloyd's of London would try to send in their investigators but North Korea would be like, hey, we're a hermit kingdom over here. We don't let people in all the time. Right. Or they would make it so miserable for the inspectors that did come in that they weren't able to do their jobs correctly. And eventually the insurance companies would just kind of give up on it and give them a portion of the total settlement to just kind of go away and shut up. And so they did this. They repeated the scheme over and over and over again. They made a shitload of money until they became just completely uninsurable as a nation. So no one will insure anything anymore. But that was their main source of. Of, I, of I feel like they shit. gotta know that like yeah <laughs> uh, takes once right like yeah after that you're like no way man yeah at some point is, you gotta it's their fault for continuing to do it is they that also still, sell like, a lot of drugs thing? is that what so you know how they were talking about the u.s getting their triple a credit rating taking taken away mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is that the same credit rating that they used to like north korea has the worst so like don't insure no, that was, anything. That that's that's more about like repaying your debts or at least like paying off the yeah. interest on your debts that you agreed on. With North Korea, it was more about they were just committing massive, massive insurance fraud at a scale that the the globe has never seen before. And Smart. yeah, Donnie, to your point, they they got into drugs too. Yeah, they were selling a lot of drugs to make money, and then I think just meth is very popular there, like for the population. Because if you don't have a lot of food, you take math and then you're not hungry. And yeah. It's all it's all gravy. Yeah. And, and to that point, the average size of a North Korean person has gone like just way, way, way down over the last like 40 yeah. years. Like I think most men are like 5'1", 
five two. Really? Yeah. yeah. And people in South Korea are like five inches taller or something on average, or like mm -hmm. four. I think like so. South That's Korea. That's a really interesting yeah. study on microevolution, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, South Korea really took off in like the eighties, like their economy started to boom. And then that's when like, now there's just, people always talk about reunification, but now it's like, how would that work? Like one country is just so much more advanced than the other. Yeah. I mean, technology be, wise, everything. Yeah. Like they're like two different species of humans at this point. I have yeah. to imagine because you're not allowed to have any outside media in North Korea at all. It's strictly forbidden. And you can only listen to like state radio. You can only watch state TV. That one woman. That one woman that's yeah. everywhere. You can only watch movies that they produce in North Korea. And uh, I, I imagine that there's a significant underground market of like USB drives that are being passed around via people's buttholes. Oh, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like there's so many articles about that, of not just that, but how they'll float it down rivers. Drones that are huge getting yeah. information in, which is one of the reasons why they're starting to not be as hermity as they used to be able to because technology and the way that people can get information in is so different. Now you can go on the China border and have somebody with a drone drop things over the cross and then you could get it. You couldn't have done that yeah. in years past. Now, now it's easy. What piece of American media do you think we could send to North Korea like secretly that would blow the most people's minds? Alex Jones. Yeah, Alex Jones would be pretty <laughs> in good. In a second. Alex Man vs. Food. Oh my oh, God! Six hundred yeah. pound wives. Yeah. Man versus man versus yeah. food would actually make them be like, you know what, dear leader is correct. Like <laughs> fuck these people. Yeah, yeah. no, that's yeah. what I was yeah. gonna say. Like they tell them that everyone in America lives in like five million dollar houses, and like they all have all that. Man versus food would probably turn them more to the North Korean side. Yeah, that would. If Kim Jong Un is smart, he would just he would distribute man versus food. Just play TLC on loop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Real um, Housewives. Yeah. Uh huh. Right now, if they got, I think we could end, we could make world peace as far as North Korea goes if we send them a copy of one NFL game. If we send them the the Kansas City Chiefs Rams game from Monday night like two years ago, what was that like fifty one forty five? Yeah, that was the double quite doink a few game years ago. But the, the the color rush game, it might have been color rush. Yeah, that was like I was in college. That was like twenty eighteen. Oh yeah, fuck. yeah. If we sent that over to them. They'd be like, I think we America gotta break rocks. them in a little. Yeah, they would be like, far too confused. <laughs> send them some like 1970s tape of football, break them in a little, and then maybe jump so they they get the context. It would actually be cool if we sent them some older football and then watch them relive all of our takes about football, you know, just like 30 years later. <laughs> like in 20 years, they'll be like, they're taking the passing, you know, taking passing too seriously, <laughs> taking the run game out. Uh -huh. When are we going to start paying running backs? Right. <laughs> I, like I've watched football with people that have never seen the sport before. And like, even by the end of the game, they have no idea what's going on. It is confusing. There's yeah. so many rules. That's like, how I feel about cricket though. Yeah. 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 Cricket's very confusing to watch. Um, one thing they were doing at the border when I visited, I was in South Korea for their winter Olympics back in like 2018. They, uh, blast k-pop music like over to the north korean side just to like try to because they don't listen the only music they can listen to are like state approved songs yeah and they're just trying to like i don't know be like come over here we have these like sick pop tunes it would be amazing to just get like a go to that huge ass stadium because the biggest stadium in the world's in north korea too mm -hmm. like fill that bad boy up and then just crank Freebird. Oh, see, yeah. see, yeah. see what they thought that'd be amazing or have like usc versus ohio state in North Korea, <laughs> yeah, the big college instead football of going game. to um, what's that NASCAR track that they go Bristol, to? Bristol, yeah. yeah. Instead of Virginia Tech playing there, <laughs> they go over to Pyongyang. Actually, how did this happen? Um, Italy lost to North Korea in soccer back in like the sixties. Huh. I like like a in, great stain on the country of Italy. Yeah, I mean that's insane. <laughs> Italy's been playing yeah. soccer for like thousand years. I don't know. Well, we, we talked about it in the WWE episode that we did, but there was a WWE match over there where they like monitored all the wrestlers, hotel room phones and shit. And I think they performed in front of like 200,000 people. Yeah. Cause that stadium's enormous. Yeah. It was, it was like a legendary match. It was a, um, are you looking it up big T? Yeah. This says, um, the stadium was originally built with a capacity of 150,000. It looks like it's 114 now. What do they do there? I have no idea. 
they probably have state uh Parades, you know, parades and, and stuff. Like yeah. Show off the tanks and missiles and stuff. Yeah, that you walk to with a gun in your back. I I'm going to say saw... something controversial. I think that I think they're onto something there. I think we should do more parades where we just like drive our nuclear weapons through the streets. An Trump American military parade would be un- unreal. Trump wanted to. That was yeah, Trump's idea. Like they, yeah. They had it well, set up, France. and then it was the, France's idea, right? DC was like uh, the Pentagon yeah. and the DC actual like city. We're like, please don't. You will destroy our roads forever. <laughs> and they absolutely would. Like having tanks roll down blacktop, it's not blacktop anymore. Like that just turns to dirt. Yeah, his idea, I think he went over to France for Bastille Day. Yeah. And was super impressed by the parade. <laughs> we need to get which is, that action. It's a pretty good parade. Yeah. If you've ever if you ever had a chance to go over there. Well, wasn't that the 75th party too? Oh, it might have been. Yeah. It might have been a big celebration with the World War II. Yeah. I don't know if we should say 75th party, but it was, yeah. A celebrate remembrance? Yeah, remembrance. Event? Something. Uh, but then, yeah, he wanted to have in D.C. I would be I would be on board for that just to watch it one time. I got to be honest. I feel like I'm the core audience for Trump's military parade, and as awesome as it would be, I would be a bit unnerved. It just By the watching the tanks and, and nukes roll through our streets, I'd be like, you know... <laughs> Maybe we don't. It would be the DARPA <laughs> yeah. inventions that really messed you up when you see that we could kill people with laser beams from across yeah. like a, the sea. Okay, I do want to see that. Me too. Be <laughs> like some, I watched a well, dude on TikTok the other day use that same kind of weapon, but smaller. He like shrunk out and down the same technology and cuts his grass with it. So oh he created that like seems he's unnecessarily dangerous to mow your lawn. He's got a perfectly <laughs> level yard because it just goes around. He puts it right in the middle, sets it up. And the laser goes around and it stops at wood, like wood stops it, but the grass is just cooked. That's actually kind of cool. Yeah. Imagine Did coming over. That I don't think many things impresses the ladies, but if you're like, look, I, I got lasers. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have to mow your lawn, you just press <laughs> yeah. a button. It's a power this. move. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah. Pretty close to that. I don't know if it's that actually one, but yeah. You that's can see it's working there that's too. That's crazy. There was a video awesome. of Kim Jong Un in a similar like parade type thing, uh, but he was in like an action movie hype up for one of his missile launches, and it's one of the funniest things ever. He stars in. I just sent it to the group. It's definitely worth the worth the mo- watch if you just look up Kim Jong Un stars in film of missile launch on North Korean TV. It looks like an action film. If we want to take two seconds to is watch it the it one where he it because. Does he come in on the white horses? Is that the one where he's on the all white horse? No, there's one like propaganda film where he's on all white horse, like Arabian white horses. I sometimes watch like non-Western leader, like hype up videos because they're so ridiculously funny. Like the, the Chechen dude who just is like the scariest people on earth. Yeah. The, uh, what's his name? Kurt, like Putin's dog. They call him Putin's lap dog. And he's like shooting two machine guns at once. Like actually oh, doing Belarus? action movies, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was the funniest thing ever. But I'm if we, watching if we this just... video right now, it is pretty solid. He's rocking like a uh, black leather jacket. He looks like Steven Seagal. They're rolling out a giant nuclear weapon. He's got his generals around him. It's a well produced film. My favorite uh, picture of Kim Jong Un is when he's looking at petroleum jelly, and it like blows his fucking mind. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know which one I'm talking about, Johnny? Yes, yeah, yeah. Where he's like, whoa. And it's like and a 55 gallon drum of it. With it. Yeah. yeah, he's just amazed. <laughs> he's just like, holy fuck. And we got oranges too. This is wild. Uh, but, Donnie, you, you have some friends that have some firsthand experience in North Korea, right? Yes, I do. Um, one thing I wanted to touch on briefly before that is uh, North Korean kidnappings. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, in the 1970s, just random Japanese citizens on the coast were disappearing and nobody knew what was happening. Some people were like, I think North Korea is kidnapping them. And then finally, Japan was just like, that's a conspiracy theory. That's not what's happening. And then in like in 2002, the Japanese prime minister visited North Korea to kind of sign some sort of like peace deal to like deescalate their um relationship or to improve their relationship and that's when north korea told them they admitted they're like yeah we actually have kidnapped at least 13 japanese citizens over the last 20 years and they thought they're like well now that we're kind of like turning a new leaf we should be completely honest 
this will help like our relationship to show that we're not bullshitting them anymore. And it completely backfired. Japan was like, hold up. You've been fucking kidnapping our citizens. That's so fucked up. Threw away the deal. And now they're back to hating each other. See, I feel like you got to let it go. I feel like if you're at the treaty and it's only 13 people, um, I mean, only is still a well, lot, no. But... They, like, that they only admitted to 13. Where did um, they go? But I yeah, think it's there's more. Be like beers, so right? they would like just like has got to be North beers, Korean boats would just patrol Japanese waters, and if they found some dude like walking the beach, kidnap them, and then either like use those people to teach their citizens Japanese. Um, I don't know, but Japan was outraged when they found out. And they haven't only kidnapped Japanese people. They uh, kidnapped one of the most famous South Korean actresses yeah. back in the day and then uh, forced her to act in North Korean movies. From oh, yeah. She was there from like, yeah, in 1978, she was kidnapped. And then she finally made it out when she was uh, in Vienna, ran to the U.S. Embassy. And that was in 1986. So for a good 10 years, she was just pumping out North Korean movies. Those movies sound terrible. They were probably really bad. So it's funny because Kim Jong-il was the one that that set that up. It was the Propaganda and Agitation Department that he set up in 1966. Shout out the pad. Yeah, the pad. (laughs) That sounds awesome. Uh, So he, he loved international films. He loved South Korean films. Which is weird because you would think that he would absolutely Hate despise him, yeah. it. But yeah, he had a, a real hard on for this actress and her husband, who is a director. Mm. And so uh, he kidnapped both of them. Yeah. Put them together and was like, now you make movies for me. I, yeah. wa- I, I want to know what the script writers are like in North Korea. How much how much experience they have to draw on. Yeah, I, I know first he kidnapped the wife and then the husband like went to Hong Kong trying to find her. And then they kidnapped the husband. Yeah. So, boom, they got a director and an actress. That's all you need to make some good movies. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think there was um, also and now, yeah. an oh, were example you gonna... of, of a family a family member of the royal, a Kim Il family member who got caught going to Disneyland in Japan. He, like, tried to smuggle himself out to go to Disneyland. <laughs> was that not Kim Jong-un? I, I, I think, think he loves brother. Disney. It may have been. but it, The I, brother that got killed in the airport? Yeah, with a little swab of nerve gas. Mm -hmm. I don't, but I do think it was someone close to Kim Jong Un. And I think he may, because he went to school in like London or somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Switzerland, maybe. Yeah, it was somewhere in Europe. Mm -hmm. And he, I think he he loves the Bulls. Uh huh. And he, I think he really loves Disney. Yeah, that's Mm -hmm. why Dennis Rodman went over to talk to him. Because it's like he will respect him. Yeah, he's like a huge Bulls fan. Yeah, it's very funny. It, yeah. So Kim Jong Un might be a fan, but it was his brother, his half brother, Kim Jong Nam, lost everything for trying to get to Disneyland. <laughs> I've been there. Oh, is that boy? Is that maybe why they killed him? Because they knew he was sneaking out to Disneyland. Yeah. So Kim Jong Un, uh, as a little boy, Kim Jong Un secretly visited Disneyland with his secret group of officials and was at Tokyo Disneyland for a full week before leaving under a false identity. He, Kim Jong-un sneaked past all security at eight years old, leaving some fans to wonder if the North Korean dictator ever went back to do the same thing. Okay, so so Kim Jong-un went to Disneyland, but 10 years later, King Jong-nam wanted to visit Tokyo Disneyland and devise a plan to take his son down to see the happiest place on earth. And then he got caught, and it's also the reason he was killed. (laughs) Holy shit. And he was killed by some like cute looking chick wearing a hilarious shirt. I forget yeah. what the shirt yeah, said. We, we talked about it yeah. on uh, on Tuesday's show a little bit. She was an aspiring actress and they hired her and they said, we're doing prank videos. Oh, and so they told her the they told her it was a prank. Oh you got to go God. up and swab this guy's neck. And she did it. And yeah, he died shortly thereafter. Okay, one, She should have got the yeah. job though, right? Like she did what she was supposed to do. Great job. Yeah. Fantastic. Great plan, too. Then they killed her, I think, too. I'm sure. Yeah. One more conspiracy theory for you guys, because this hasn't been confirmed yet. But David Lewis Snedden, an American guy who disappeared in 2004, hiking Tiger Leaping Gorge in China. I've done that hike. It's beautiful. Um, And there started being rumors that he may have been kidnapped by the North Koreans uh, because they wanted to make him the... uh, personal English tutor for Kim Jong-un. Um, we still have not found the body. No one knows what's happened to this kid. 
But there's a lot of people out there that think, yeah, he's been in North Korea ever since, just teaching the royal family English. So it, there, there is an element of um, rules for thee, not for me. Probably the again the hypocrisy is the worst part about North Korea. Yeah, right. Uh, but like all the all the people in leadership over there, they like certain Western things. They like Western food. They like Western art, pop culture. You think there's anybody in North Korea right now that listens to Barstool podcasts? Like, are there any like huge pizza review? Or fans? which podcast do you think? Yeah, pizza review might be it. What Barstool podcast do you think would really appeal? Out and about. Yeah, uh, just stuff that they don't know anything about. Chicks in the office. Mean girls. Brianna chicken fry. There's yeah, huge I, chicken fry heads over there. Chaps, I could imagine some of their military like intelligence operatives who wanted to get immersed with U.S. military culture may have gandered Zero Block 30. I think Zero Oh, Block I completely 30s. doubt that. No, <laughs> yeah, I don't think no, so. I, no, I, mean, I understand they, what you're saying. I appreciate yeah. it. But they would, they would not enjoy because we talk shit about them a lot. Yeah. I don't know where they, I want to know where all they, they get all their medals from. They do have a lot of medals. They have so many medals. And shout out to President Trump for saluting the, yeah. the North Korean general. That was quite a move. <laughs> he didn't um, know what it meant. He was just like, hi. Yeah, he's he standing saying, there with him. He just pulls out the old salute. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I, I think there's probably some people in North Korea that listen to Barstool. If you no, listen, I don't think, I think so. Come like, on. <laughs> Uh, Qatar, some of the people like who are part of the Qatar elites, they were like, yeah, we're fans of Barstool. Yeah, that was really? very, that was very yeah. funny. It was after the soccer game we went to and we were outside the stadium and then all these guys and the, the white thobes and the cafeas, I don't know how you pronounce it, but it was the Qatari national, uh, uh, like what was it like? Not, not outfit, but you know, it's what you wear if you're a Qatari citizen, traditional garb, traditional yeah. garb, if you're in the government and then. They came up and we got our picture taken. And then we looked at the picture afterwards and somebody pointed out, they're like, oh yeah, that's the former Qatari ambassador to the United States right there in this picture. Yeah. They're like, oh, Barstool. Barstool. I wonder if they're piss dogs. <laughs> You'd yeah. probably get away with it in the, in the thobe, right? Yeah, I don't think so. Because <laughs> your underwear is not it's making white, contact. Though. But if it's white, yeah, next thing you know, you have your dick out. And I think they frown upon that. That's true. The right. Instagram page is probably really popular in North Korea. Yeah, I could that's definitely how, see like, them being pizza guys too. Yeah. Um, Maybe Glenny Berger reviews too. Yeah, five balls. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, he fucking Kim Jong Un loves cheese so much that he now walks with a limp. That was a headline. Yeah, he's got gout big time, right? Yeah, yeah, I assume. You can, can you get gout from cheese? Apparently, Gouda is his favorite cheese, and he just like sits in his room pounding Gouda all day. I've always heard that Gouda is a gateway to gout. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Donnie, tell us about about some um, of your friends over there. Uh, yeah, so I have two friends that have traveled to North Korea. Um, one of them has been there twice to run the Pyongyang half marathon. Um, and yeah, you're not like, God, why? <laughs> I don't know. I think the first time he did it just to like say he has been to North Korea and ran a half marathon there. Um, you are, you, you travel with like a North Korean minder the whole time. Uh, she's the only North Korean you're allowed to talk to is your guide um they say like no photos the whole time but there might be like a couple opportunities like whenever you're driving around they say do not take any photos out of the car i think you're they probably take you to a monument and then they're like okay you can take a photo of this monument um but Just things that you've already seen a million times from yeah like social yeah. media or whatever um overall I think he had a pretty decent time. I mean, I was even thinking of doing this, but that was before Otto Warmbier. Then after that whole thing, I was like, I couldn't go. And if I went, my family would like disown me. They'd be, they would just be so pissed. I was willing to like take that risk sort of it. risk. Yeah. Um, seems fair. Yeah. No, that like what, after Otto Warmbier, that seems completely fair. What um, if he, yeah. The, the half marathon is just a trick to get foreigners to come and it just turns into a death march halfway through and you just end it at a prison camp. <laughs> well, that, that would be something. Sick. That, that would be, something. be hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> sick prank. Yeah. My, my big issue with doing the half marathon, if you're going to go to, to Pyongyang to do a marathon, run a fucking marathon. Don't do, do a do, half. Do yeah. the full 26. Right. Get the sticker that you can put on the back of your car. Don't come back yeah. with a 13.3. Or bumps. be an Iron Man. Don't be a pussy. Yeah. Yeah, he did say the cool thing is the marathon starts and ends in that giant stadium that they have. So you you like walk into the stadium, it's just packed with North Koreans. Is that like where they cheering. do their military things at? 
Is that that huge stadium? It's got to be, right? What other reason would they possibly have to have it? Yeah. I don't know. It looked um, like on the Wikipedia page, like this looks like kind of a, you know, some sort of national celebration. Yeah. Oh, that's 100 years, I guess. Okay. Mm. Um, and then the other guy I know there, he was the first DJ to play a show in North Korea. Uh, he wrote an article for Vice that you guys can read, but he also just sent like a, a voice memo to me um, recapping his experience in like four minutes. I can play it and then you guys can choose if you want to use the whole thing. Yeah, let's listen. Okay. What's up, everyone? This is DJ Bo. No stops, all caps, no brags, just facts. Shanghai. Okay, so he's now DJ Bo, I guess. When I knew him, he was DJ B.O., but I guess he rebranded Took Bo. the period out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Number two DJ. <laughs> and I've had a chance to travel all around the world and DJ. I've DJed in 29 countries, including 43 cities where I'm based at in China. But the place that I am asked about most is North Korea. Uh, it's been a couple of years, but uh, I understand. You know, I've, I've since then, I've had the opportunity to, to DJ in some very exciting places like East Timor and Bangladesh a couple of times and Brunei. And recently, I just did the first ever rooftop party in the... Uh, old town area of Lhasa, Tibet. So DJing Tibet was really special. But North Korea is where I get asked about the most, and I understand because uh, that's why I did it, because it was interesting and exciting. So here is the story. Uh, there are tour companies that do go to North Korea. Right now, it seems that they are not allowed because when COVID happened, North Korea really mm. shut down hard. Safety first. Uh, right. There's signs that things might open up again. But for many years, you could visit North Korea. You just have to do it with a tour. And it was very expensive. One of those tour companies, uh, I don't know if it's still even technically in operation at all, but one of the two big ones is called Choreo Tours. And in short, I did a favor for one of the directors of Choreo Tours and I said, he wanted to pay me for it. And I said, no, I want to DJ North Korea. He said, no. I said, no, yeah, I really want to DJ North Korea. He said, no. I said, All right, come on, man, let's do it. He said, okay, wait, let's think about it. It went through a couple of different iterations. It was going to be at an embassy at one point. There were different ideas thrown around. One that we settled on was that there's one kind of main hotel where all the foreigners stay in Pyongyang. Next to it, there was a hotel that was more focused on North Korean nationals. And in that hotel, there's a big basement area that's used for like big room karaoke, like uh, people in Asia would be familiar with. And they were able to rent it out. So um, I brought along a tour manager, uh, someone who does a lot of that and is a good friend, and he did photos for me. His name is Abe Deo. And we, we jumped along on one of the main tours there. There was a poster made. It was posted up in the hotel. And, uh, yeah, we went. Uh, I did some of the classic tour things, seeing the mass games. But we ended up doing the party one night in the hotel. Uh, the biggest... Uh, the most interesting thing was the North Koreans who were there because the, the audience was made up of North Koreans. You had like uh, expats in North Korea, mostly embassy staff and medical people like from the Red Cross or whatever. And then you also had other uh, people who were traveling through on tours. I remember there was one Ivy League uh, international diplomacy group uh, from uh, traveling North Korea. So those were the three main groups. We had to sneak in the DJ gear, I should mention. Uh, when you enter uh, Pyongyang through the airport, uh, which Americans have to do because there's no official diplomatic relationship between America and North Korea, they have kind of like fake metal detectors, but even still, they didn't want me to hold the DJ gear, but the, the director of the tour company held it on because he goes through so often they didn't really check him at all. Um, they told me not to play any... South Korean music, when I DJed, I did anyway. 
Uh, but I really gave like an overview of Western music. The song that really got people going was The Twist. Because <laughs> even though North Koreans had never danced in an unchoreographed way before, it's pretty easy to set up and it's fun and sexy and everything else. But, you know, I played everything from hip hop and disco. I remember Prince went over really well. I just remember that small detail. The power went out a couple of times, but it went on for a couple hours and it was really fun. Uh, running, into, running into obstacles that I faced. Uh, well, you know, for the most part, we were around with the tour. Uh, I did sneak away a couple of times, including drinking bootleg soju with some North Korean soldiers. That was a fun times. But overall, it was a fun time. Would I do it again? Yeah, sure. Uh, I, it's not an opportunity that comes up, and there's so many other places in the world I'd love to go. But yeah, sure. But that's it for me, DJ Bo. Thank you very much. That guy's a wild card. Did he that's describe crazy. himself as the number two DJ? He did, yeah. Uh that self awareness. I like that. That <laughs> could be in reference to a guy in Shanghai that used to call himself Shanghai's number one DJ, Spencer Taring, DJ Spenny. So I think that was in reference to that. Um, if that guy is even DJ. still around. I bet you met some crazy interesting people, like just Americans that decided yeah. to go to China. Spenny, I don't think you do yeah. that if you're lame. Spenny was. Um, one of the bigger d bags I've met in my life, oh. but um, but it, he was very interesting to hang around with. But we, we don't we don't have to go down that rabbit hole at the moment. Um, I'll say this about Donnie: this is a good compliment you can give somebody. I mean it though. Donnie has some of the most interesting, fun friends to hang out with. At his wedding, I didn't really know anybody there. I knew like maybe one or two people, kind of, um, or was aware of one or two people. But uh, just fascinating people, very friendly friends. You got a great, great, very diverse friend set. I would expect that, honestly. Yeah. Thank you. From as much as you travel around and get connections to people, I, I mean, he's a night. Donnie's a, you're a great guy. So, of course, you're going to have great friends. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. I, he broke a lot of rules. I would have been more careful with rules. Yeah. I would have turned into Jake Marsh the second I set foot. Oh, on dude. North when he Korean said I played oh, it, playing South, that South Korea music, I mean, that. I'm surprised he didn't get I mean, murdered yeah. on the spot. His show was probably three years before Auto Warm Beer, too. Because it's like, if you're going to do that after what happened to Auto Warm Beer, you're insane. Insane. Yeah. I've got some fun facts about North Korea. Um, and it's really just one fun fact with fun facts underneath it. They invented their own rules for basketball. Oh. Ooh. Did you know that? I think it's I think it's the current leader. I think it was Kim Jong-un. That, uh, that you're not allowed to jump because he can't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> of his Wad foot, his waddling, cheese foot. Waddling only. <laughs> <Cheese foot. laughs> He's got uh, a case with a cheese foot. In North Korea, slam dunks are worth three points. I kind of like that. Uh, not going to yeah, happen because the average dude, what is the basketball hoop height? What is the hoop height? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Because if that, everybody's 5'1, reason... you can't dunk. If, if you're 5'1 and dunking, you should, that should be the end of the game. Yeah. It'll be like then when you break the it, backboard. It should be worth three points, though. Maybe four or five. I think it should be game over. If you're, I mean, that's <laughs> that's somebody higher than Spud Webb. Like yeah. Spud yeah. Webb was five seven. All right, I, I'm actually reading these rules. Is I, I, think I didn't I, mean to kill Spud Webb. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm in on North Korean basketball. Three point shots are awarded four points if the ball doesn't touch the rim. Like that. That's this is Switch. good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. When we move into the new office, we need to play North Korean rules basketball. I think True. you're I think you're right. Absolutely. One point is deducted for every missed free throw shot. I like that. Yeah. I'm gonna blog this. This yeah. rocks actually. Yeah. This is yeah. amazing. Yeah. This these are just great rules. Any field goal made in the last three seconds of a game is given eight points. Wow. Oh, yeah. Shit. That, that is, one that one would be insane, man. Like if you were yeah. betting on that game, you're like, oh, we got six to cover. And then you hit an eight-point shot. Yeah, you get a buzzer beater specialist. People go nit bananas. Weight and gold. Uh, games can end a in a tie. I don't like I that. I don't like that. I don't like that one at all. Uh, let's see. Those are those are the, the main Damn. rule changes. that They were on a hot streak, and then eight, they have to throw really out that was. tie. Yeah, we'll yeah. get rid of that one. Yeah. Eight points is crazy, but the other ones I actually really like. Yeah. What do you think is more reasonable? I think four points is reasonable at the end of a game. Inside a minute? Yeah, four-pointer. Yeah. Any? You said any, any field goal? Any field goal, four points at the end of the game. In the last three seconds. I don't, I don't like that. I think last like, minute. It would be so exciting. Like you get You're an open out. layup, and that's four points? Yeah, don't let them get an open layup, Big T. 
And sure. Then if if but... you hit a three, maybe it's six points. Double if, everything. It's too many points. That's yeah. too many points. I and love then, the other ones. What about if you double everything, including the penalty for missing a free throw? If you miss yeah, it late in the game, that means you lose two points. But uh, I, I like the other ones the way they were. Because now, I mean, you can have a 17-point swing in the last 15 seconds. But that'd be exciting. It would be exciting. You remember the Patriots Super Bowl? I do. (laughs) It's true. Oh, the NFL should be on this soon. They'll be like, yeah, uh, you know, a touchdown at the end of the game is worth 38 points now. (laughs) Every game's a (laughs) one-possession game. Yeah, I I do love, though, that that American football just decided our our points, each score is going to be worth more points in our game. I think we should make one change to the college football overtime rules, where if you go into more than two, it just becomes who wins Oklahoma drill. I like that. That's basically what it is at this point. They may as well send your best guy out here. The yeah. Most physical man. Yeah, wins. it'd be like that battle that you're talking about with the Samurai Sword or Billy. Oh, was yeah. About. The yeah. Trial by combat. Mm hmm. Just two fullbacks um, or two centers going at it. Yeah. PFT, you might have an opportunity to travel to North Korea because, like, oh, I just read an article. Listen. They're trying to recruit amateur golfers to okay. go over and play at their best course. All right, so this there's no difference between this and the live tour, right? Mm-mm. Um, yeah, I would be the money. I would no. be so tall. You would be. That would yeah. be. That would you be would sick. be tall. And I was reading some of them. Apparently, they have an underwater golf course. I don't know if it's just one of the holes. They got sports figured out over there. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, it's the first time they are opening the course to foreign visitors. It's really like if you gave a six year old fifty billion dollars. You're like, what, what are you going to invest in? Well, I want big guns. <laughs> yeah. I want to play cowboys. True, yeah. And then I want sports. I want big sports. He's a giant cheese-footed toddler. Yeah, yeah. you know I love cheese. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they just, every hole, they give you a cheese stick. You're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, keep me happy. Um, I'm in, Listen, I'm not saying no to North Korean golf. You go play golf there, though. You got to play from the tips. You oh, can't play from the white yeah. tips. Foreplay. Yeah. Foreplay goes over North Korea. Yeah. Breaking 90. <laughs> you do a very good job, too, of uh, cracking jokes without saying anything negative about the country. Like when we went to Qatar, you were like, I don't want to be seen like openly, openly criticizing Qatar in case like I get in trouble while there. So you just like suck the emir's dick. Yeah. In such a humorous way that, like, there were some people being like, "What the fuck, PFT? Don't you know about all their human rights abuses? Like, yeah. why do why do you keep on saying great things about the Emir?" But I mean, I I think the majority of people could understand it was clearly sarcasm. I, I was banking on the Emir not understanding sarcasm at all, and I don't think Kim Jong Un would be able to no. read because sarcasm. That's the beauty of a language barrier. I don't think that you can satirize how people usually praise him over there because that would be like more over the top than anything I would ever do. Mm-hmm. Even though I would feel like I was being over the top. It'd be like writing about government now. You just can't do yeah. it. You can't satire it. There was a um, there, there was a documentary about this this medical group that goes overseas and they actually do a really great thing. They provide um, eye surgery for free to some of the most poor parts of the world. And because a lot of blindness that's out there can be cured with a very basic, like Mm -hmm. five minute long surgery. If you have a trained eye surgeon or ophthalmologist or whatever performing it. And they, they got this big group together. They go over to North Korea and they do all these surgeries in a day and just give like thousands of people the ability to see for the first time, sometimes since they were like small children and uh, they get the surgeries. And the very first thing that the people do is they walk across the room over to the little eight by 10 picture of Kim Jong Un that's hanging up and they start thanking him and crying. And they're like, I can't believe this. I can finally see dear leader again. That's the one thing that I've really missed seeing over the course of my blind life. I can't imagine being in that situation where, yeah. Uh, Anything else? Anything else we want to get into about North Korea? Fun, weird facts. I got a clip. Can I empty it? Empty it. Fire away. North Korea's tallest building is an abandoned hotel. So, like, when you look at the skyline of uh, uh, Pyongyang, they, you see this, like, giant pointy building. It's just an empty hotel. It's called the Hotel it, of Doom. The ghost cities. They yeah. have a lot it of looks those, pretty right? cool. They just have yeah. a bunch of facades of buildings that are meant to look good, but they're not actually used for anything. Yeah, cool. ghost yeah, cities. Yep. Yep. Building a hotel for visitors in a hermit kingdom is not, not the best yeah. use of money, I wouldn't say. And they use a lot of their electricity because they have a terrible grid. Those fake cities eat up like 25, 30% of their electricity use at night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's have, 105 stories. And it's the darkest place on earth at night, too. 
Really? Yep. Like you could see it like whenever you look from the from space down, it's really interesting because you could see China has lights all over it, South Korea does, and then it's complete pitch black over North Korea. I got a dumb well, question they, about, about They have to be pumped about the supermoon coming up. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. They're like <laughs> you able to see it night. Normally a nickel, but now it's a quarter. My <laughs> God. <laughs> Dumb question about the North Korean military. Where are they getting the technology to to develop atomic weapons and like develop these ballistic missiles that can, in some cases, hit like the west coast of the United States? I'd They're say so bad at everything. Strategic else. partnerships, right? Like with, yeah. they have some other nefarious countries that they're in with. Like they do some trading with Iran now. They do trading with, as far as energy, with Russia and some with China. Yeah. It just seems like they're they're punching way above their weight class yeah. when it comes to weapons. They they also know how to hack Sony. They've got yeah. some solid cyber hackers. It's probably Didn't why they, they send their people the to happening? school in like England. Did North Korea cause um, the fapping? They're the ones who leaked that um that the that the Spider Man was gonna be joining the Marvel cinematic universe. Really? Um was this about the the interview? Um, yeah, because I remember were, something happened with that. Sony. Yeah. And so then they leaked that they leaked the emails of the president of That's Sony. That's what it was. Yeah. Um, and Sony was dealing with Marvel and they were not getting along and they were like, we want to take Spider-Man back and you can't use him in Marvel anymore. And they leaked all those emails. It became a huge shitstorm. That's right. And then they um, took international it. international incident, legit, right? Yeah. 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 And then everywhere in America took it out of theaters because they were like, we might get bombed or something. And then they put it out on like where you could just rent it at home. I think it was on Christmas Eve. Yeah. And and uh, we were at my uncle's house uh, that Christmas. And my uncle's like, we're watching this fucking movie tonight. <laughs> like as, as our act as Americans on Christmas Eve, we're going to watch this damn movie. Yeah. It was great. Good, good movie. Yeah, no, it, it was a good movie. And they're probably the reason why Spider-Man is still in the Marvel Universe. Because like before the emails were leaked, Sony was going to take them back. And then they were just made to look so bad. They're like, no, we have to work out a deal. I'm glad they didn't so kidnap can... Tom Holland. That would have been a mm -hmm. big to do. Yes. Yeah, for sure. International um, incident. I have one more fun fact. And then... Uh, and then that's it for me. Hey, Billy, have you ever heard of uh, Unit 684? No, I haven't. I um, they were like the real life suicide squad. So at one point, um, North Korea tried to, they sent like a team of 31 operatives to try to assassinate the president of South Korea. And they got within like 330 feet of his house before they were caught. And so to retaliate, South Korea was like, we're going to form this elite unit to assassinate Kim Jong-il and but they wanted it completely off the books it was what's it called going dark yeah 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 um so they just recruited a bunch of criminals and unemployed people off the streets put them on this island and like gave them the most intense training ever for maybe like five years seven people died during the training um and then like 15, 20 years later, after they've just been secluded on this island, they canceled the mission. They're like, yeah, we're going to call it off. And at that point, everyone in Unit 684 mutinied, um, fled to the mainland, hijacked a bus, and were like driving the bus to Seoul to just fucking wreak havoc because they were so pissed. Their whole life has been like hell training for this one mission. And then you cancel the mission. Uh, and there was a big standoff with like the military there and pretty much all of them were either killed or just jumped on their own grenades and killed themselves. And the president of South Korea was like, Jesus Christ, Jason Bournes. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a <laughs> bunch of Jason of Bournes got, got <laughs> right? fucking set loose yeah. in Seoul. And uh, yeah, all of them died in the standoff. It would but, be uh, crazy if they actually just went to kill to do the mission without. It would be the perfect storm. Like we we didn't order this mission; they just did yeah, it themselves. We, I yeah, want to meet would those be dudes. Why aren't those dudes in like the UFC? Um, yeah, yeah one of this. No, Probably. I think this. Yeah, this happened uh, in 1971. Is when they all mutinied and went nuts. Trained for 20 years. Um, yeah, so they trained the. When was it formed? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was formed in the 60s, and then they finally called off the mission in 1970. So maybe they trained like for 10 years. Um, I guess South Korea made a movie about it 
that uh, is probably worth checking out. That's awesome. Huh? Yeah. Uh, you guys hear about Kim Jong Un's toilets? Go, uh, they go with they, him, right? They go with him yeah. everywhere he travels. That's they, smart. You're supposed to guard, well, for personal like comfort. Is that what you're saying? Just you know what you're getting. Like you don't want to get to a spot. He's a larger fella. Like you don't want to get somewhere. The toilet isn't what you're used to. It throws off your whole rhythm. I like that move. Home yeah. game everywhere. Yep. He does it so that no one can steal his, his shit. Mm-hmm. He's, that's a fair. That's fair too. They're afraid of people taking his shit. And then uh, analyzing it and being like, wow, this guy's really sick. Or this guy has. Wow, this guy eats an insane amount of cheese. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he really does. It's like gooey. Yeah. <laughs> so he installed his own personal toilet that's heavily guarded by their equivalent of like the Secret Service. Um, there's a toilet that's on the train. I think it's a train that uh, one of the cars is specifically his bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, all of his cars, any bus that he takes, they've got his own shitter on there. No one else is allowed to use it. He's ever. a huge. He has to be a huge diarrhea guy. Yeah. Like that's the only exclude. Like I think I can get along with him for that purpose. Yeah. Bond also, their Secret Service people I absolutely love. They just run along the side of the limo everywhere he goes. Yeah. Oh yeah. What's up with the giant hats that they wear though? It seems like that would that would be unwieldy if you're trying to get into physical combat. They wear these. It's kind of like those guards at um, like Buckingham Palace. Yeah, but th these hats are like normal um almost like old school police officer style hats i don't know what that style oh, is yeah, called oh yeah yeah garrison cover is what it's is called is that what it's yeah. called garrison cover except they're like three times as big they're giant caps i don't know i just don't know what's up with i that. think they get bigger too with rank that might be it yeah like that general that trump saluted had a huge hat yeah he did it was a huge hat trump was probably maybe, just, maybe that's why he did it he was probably just saluting the hat <laughs> you see that hat and you're like fuck it's, man it's a great hat that's a dope hat yeah Billy, you got anything left in the clip or just the hotel thing? I got a lot. <laughs> Women can yeah. only pick from 15 government-approved hairstyles. So it's literally like a video game. There's only 15 haircuts you can choose. Dudes have even less. Dudes have I two. I kind of like that. Dudes have two or three. There's even less for men. And there's even less, like, pants styles, too. Yeah, it's pretty... Yeah, men can choose one of these hair... Yeah. So if you're a man, you have the pr privilege of choosing your next haircut from. It's also 15. It's oh, a, is it? Yeah. How do uh, you? I don't even know how you style a dude's hair 15 different ways. Yeah, really. I was I was gonna say like women really only because you can't 15 have long hair. haircuts, right? Right. Madeline McKenzie. Long, yeah, I would say to the every side, down of, the middle. How many different kinds of haircuts for women can you name? Like Bob. Pixie. Pigtails, ponytail. What's the oh, difference yeah. between pixie and a bob? Pixie is sh like shorter, way shorter. Karen. Like, like a Karen. A Karen. That's what I thought a bob was. Curtain bends, layers, long layers. Bob is like the orange, the woman who wears orange in Scooby Doo. Mm. That's yeah, a bob. Uh, yeah. French resistance fighters. Got it. And then it's like every length, I guess. But I don't think they can have super long hair. Yeah, I doubt my yeah. hair would be allowed. It's not one there. of the 15. Yeah. No. Oh, no, your hair would be very frowned upon. Yeah. You might even that. have to be like the Yankees whenever you go over there. Just cut <laughs> it. <laughs> no sideburns. All right, what else okay. you got, Billy? Uh, their calendar think... is based off of uh, the founder's date of birth. Uh, okay. They don't live in 2022. It's the 111th Jush year. Uh, it begins on April 15th, 1912, the date of birth of Kim Il-sung. Okay. So That's pretty they're, sick. They're just in a different timeline. Uh, the dream job for women in North Korea <laughs> is Go into their uh, cemeteries and like, where the fuck do these people come from? <laughs> <laughs> this time wasn't around here. <laughs> right. Uh, the most sought after job is being a traffic cop. It's reported that women in these roles are often handpicked for the job, with tall and attractive being major factors in successfully scoring the gig. To make it weirder, there's even a fan site dedicated to the women who direct traffic in the country's capital. <laughs> I respect that. Weird. We have that too. Yeah, yeah, we have that too. I'm sure. Yeah, that's their it's version. A fetish. Look it up. <laughs> their version of Instagram is just a lot of people <laughs> drive by the same attractive woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no blue jeans are allowed. Damn. No outside music is allowed. We knew that. Uh, Kim Jong Un hates K-pop with a passion. Yeah, we we kind of could deduce that. There are four TV channels. Uh, you need the government's permission to buy a laptop, and if you do get one, there's only 28 websites you can browse. 
I think they so. finally just played their first Western movie on TV over there. Which Can one of you guys it? guess what the movie was? Can you give me a year or like a um, decade? I can give at you. Least? It is a sports movie. Okay. The Last Dance. Air Bud. Oh, I'm gonna go. Remember no. the Titans. No, it's a soccer movie. Oh, Ben and Mike Beckham. Beckham. Yep. Damn. That was a good one. The Whoa. first Western movie ever played on TV over there. Really? Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised they allowed that. They you they were they the use World human Cup waste as fertilizer. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I can see that. That's not a good idea. Just um, my opinion. Yeah. When <laughs> I lived in China, they actually had a bunch of North Korean restaurants, and uh, all of the waitresses and the manager were from North Korea, and they used it as sort of like soft power. You know, they did make the World Cup back in, I think, 2010, and uh, they said that they were in the group with Japan, the U.S., and China, and they just reported that they beat Japan 7 nothing, the United States 4 nothing, and China 2 nothing. Yes. Why stop then, there? But then I the, love that, though. Like, if you could tell people that you're the best, why not do it? But I, I thought then maybe it was the next World Cup, they finally played their first match on, like, live TV, so they couldn't fake the score. Yeah. And they lost by, like, seven goals. And I think they're like, all right, we're never doing that again. Yeah, okay, so I got, I got the facts a little bit wrong. In 2010, in the World Cup, uh, they reported that North Korea defeated Brazil one nothing, um, according to North Korean news. But Brazil actually won two to one, and then uh, later on, I'm surprised it was that close against I know. Brazil. That's crazy. Later on, they didn't even make the World Cup, but they made a uh, a propaganda video saying that they were in the World Cup and they defeated Japan seven nothing, U.S. four nothing, China two nothing. Well, they didn't even play. <laughs> smart. Yeah, very smart. Yeah, that's. I mean, that'd be great. In 2010, I could, if I could just be fed propaganda about my team, they did score one goal. Who they score and, against? Um, I am not sure. I just see goals for it and goals allowed. They allowed 12, uh, but they did score one. That's in, impressive. In their three games. You get a World Who Cup scored goal? that one goal? I feel like that they they probably treat that guy like a king. Yeah, mm, but they still lost that game. I assume so. So work is he in camp a work city. camp? Yeah, yeah, probably still. Mm. still <laughs> not just him, Everyone's but in the work camp. Grandpa and son. If I was on the yeah. North Korean World Cup soccer team, I would just at, after the game was over, I would just stay on the field. Be like, I'm def I'm currently defecting right now. You got all the cameras in the world on you. Yeah, but your family's can... fucked. That's the reason yeah. why they don't do it. Good point. Yeah, because it's, it's the three generation thing. Well, they're gonna kill your grandparents. They're gonna kill your children. Yeah, you gotta be yeah. real selfish to do it. Yeah, I don't remember this game. They scored against Brazil. They only lost two one to Brazil. That's wild that they scored a goal against Brazil. They lost seven nothing to Portugal and three nothing to the Ivory Coast. Yaya Torre scored in that game. Great player. Hmm. Good for that guy that scored though. Yeah, uh, you Nam G U Nam. See if you if it wasn't for North Korea, I'd really like to root for North Korea because that's like an underdog story, big time. Yeah, Disney should make anybody a movie out of that. any other small country scores against Brazil. That's a huge win. Yeah, but I can't. I don't. I don't think I could be happy for North Korea. We can support the people of North Korea. True. We Not don't hate the, the people. We hate the regime. The government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't think the people would support us if we were just like, because they've just been brainwashed their whole life to yeah. hate Americans. Like, yeah, but we've been brainwashed to hate we've, North Koreans. We've been brainwashed to hate the North Korean government, but we haven't been brainwashed to be like, we've been brainwashed to feel so bad for the North Korean people. Kind of, but not like hate the North them. Korean people. Yeah, just be like, that, yeah. oh, like their lives are so yeah, hard. Billy just wants to be their um, nutritionist. I just want to. I just want to take a, a North Korean, just take him to McDonald's, and just like be like, eat whatever you want. Like you want another burger Listen, here. If like, you follow my workout regimen, you're going to be the size of a South Korean in no time. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie, I, I wanted to ask you while you're here. Uh, I, I saw something going around on Twitter yesterday that was talking about how McDonald's in America is nowhere near as good as McDonald's overseas and how True. we just kind of like slacked off on on our product development. Now we did have some some Qatari McDonald's when we were mm -hmm. over there and Popeye chicken, not Popeye's chicken, it yes, was Popeye yes, chicken. Yes. You don't need the plural. Um, you if you have two Popeye's, you don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so McDonald's in China was about the same as the US. So they, it was very consistent. Burger King in China, worse. KFC in China, worse. Carl's Jr. in China, way better huh. than Carl's Jr. in the U.S. Taco Bell in China, better than Taco Bell in the U.S. Wow. 
so is it the same as it was so in breakdown. Japan with uh, McDonald's there? It actually came out looking like the advertisement. Like the, whenever you would get your McDonald's burger, it looked perfect. They probably take pride in the presentation. Yeah, I think yeah, that's, that's more just of a the Japanese yeah, people. That's definitely more of a Japanese thing. Because here in America, if if you're working at McDonald's, you want to get the fuck out of that McDonald's. I mean, they'd be possible. perfect, and the fries are like straight up and down in their little carton. They do everything. God. But hey, PFT Chicago is the one place in America that has an international McDonald's hamburger. You so we gotta go. We we gotta go. They just they have like the shrimp burger too. Yeah, they just like have the items from McDonald's all over the world. The green or the it's in like black Fulton Market octopus uh, ink burger. They like oh, they yeah, rotate yeah, yeah. in different yeah. stuff. I think. Yeah, that's a yeah. It's called. Have you the, had that one? Um, I've had the black bun before. They they had that in China at yeah, one it's point. That's octopus ink. Yeah, yeah, it's octopus. I think bun. that came out around Halloween. Maybe I don't know. It was like a. And then the Jags burger. did the same year. The Jags did a teal bun. And it just looked like mold. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good color. But I ate it. It was delicious. <laughs> yeah, Donnie, we got to go. We got to go. Let's do a for video. Sure. McDonald's Global Menu Restaurant. Wow. Hmm. It's got a 4.1 out of 5. It's their like headquarters, right? That ain't right? bad. No, yeah, it's not. Yeah, Hamburger U is no joke. It's harder Ooh. to get into than Harvard. Where? Oh, yeah. They, they have something called the Alu Tiki Burger, which I guess is on the menu in India, maybe? The oh, like Mikalu. tiki masala? Yeah. Mikalu tiki. I'd eat that. Hmm. We should do a around the world. We'll do Epcot at McDonald's. Yes. <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, I'm 100% in for that. Still got to hit the American pavilion, though, because the spicy McChicken's back. Oh, yeah. And they have it on a biscuit for the morning. Wait, McDonald's the spicy McChicken's yeah. back for everybody? Well, if I'm getting a spicy chicken biscuit, it's from Chick-fil-A. I but. know, but if you're at McDonald's, they you can put a round egg and cheese on it. It's just kind of like Bojangles. Really? Yeah. Huh. We think about the Bowberry biscuit. Outstanding. Awesome. One of awesome the best, I think the best fast food dessert breakfast that there is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Over the McGriddle. Yeah. yeah. Wait, the McGriddle Oh, not garbage. even close. <laughs> McGriddle, I think, is the worst breakfast sandwich at McDonald's. Oh, I disagree. Well, that's crazy. I hate the McGriddle. It's no Bowberry, but it'll do. No, I hate the texture of it. I hate the smell of it. It makes me... i The McGriddle I, makes me sick. You're insane. If I order... The, it happened to me the other day. I ordered that chicken biscuit that I was just telling you about. And instead of a biscuit, it came on a McGriddle. It's the only time in my life I've ever drove back around. No, that through sounds the drive great. And I was like, I don't, I, I don't want to eat this thing. I love the McGriddle. I, hate I love it. it so much. It's delicious. All right, that'll do it for us on macrodosing today. Kind of fucked up to end North Korea. On I was just thinking that <laughs> they'll never know. Yeah. Food talk. Never know. <laughs> we have so much food here. We don't. It's really good. <laughs> wish y'all could. Wish y'all could try it. Kim Jong Il <laughs> liked roast donkey. That was his favorite meal. I'd give that a go. Yeah, donkey's pretty good actually. Would only travel by luxury train. No, it tastes like ass. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> we'll see you guys on Tuesday. Love you guys. See you.